of the University of Iowa and Iowa City and the University of Missouri and Columbia are only 234 miles apart. We asked Gary Pinkle, 100 years these two schools haven't played when you're border states. He said, hey, we have borders with eight states. We can't play everybody <laughs> exactly. with whom we share a border. We wouldn't play anybody else. Ricky Stanzi hoping to engineer an upset of Gary Pinkle's Missouri Tigers tonight. Gary in his 10th year at Mizzou, already their third all-time winning as coach. Three and three in ball games. And on the other side of the field, Kirk Ferentz in his 12th season, five and three in bowl games. They've won January bowl games. At the end of each of the last two seasons, they won the Outback Bowl and the Orange Bowl in the last two years. Grant Russell kicks off for Missouri there in white. Both of these teams wear the black and gold. Paul Cheney, the run back for Iowa, and he's out to the 33-yard line where he is tackled by E.J. Gaines. So here's Ricky Stanzi. 25 touchdown passes is tied for the Big Ten lead with Terrell Pryor of Ohio State. It's also two away from the single season Iowa record of 27 set by Chuck Long, the greatest quarterback in school history back in 1985. They open in the eye with Brett Morris in front of Marcus Coker. And it's Coker, the freshman running right. Broke free from one tackle, but was stacked up at the 35-yard line, perhaps the 36. There's the rest of the Hawkeye offense. They average 29 points per game, 49th in the country. Marvin McNutt is their leading receiver. Colin Sandeman gets the start in the absence of Johnson Kulianos. And up front, on the left side of the offensive line, a couple of second-team All-Big Ten linemen, Riley Reef and Julian Vanderbelde. Just Coker in the backfield now. Running right again, and a hard-earned yard or two. Xavier Gooden, uh, Gooden made the tackle for a good Missouri defense that, as we mentioned, is among the leaders in the nation in scoring defense. Six in the country, giving up only 15.2 points per game. Great defensive ends in the Smiths, Jaquise and Alden. Andrew Gatchkar is their leading tackler senior out of Overland Park, Kansas, and an outstanding secondary, three seniors and a junior, with a combined 117 career starts. Dave Steckled, the defensive coordinator, says he believes Kevin Rutland, the corner, has NFL skills. Third down and five for Iowa. Stanzi going deep. McNutt's behind the defense and has it. Inside the 20 and tackled at the 13-yard line by Carl Geddes. The first big play of the night, 49 yards for the Hawkeyes. This is all on Stanzi. He knows he has one-on-one -on -one outside. And in order to get it done, you've got to get the protection, which he does. And then McNutt gets on top of Geddes right at the line of scrimmage. He beats him right there. There's the difference. And it's a long stride. The ball slightly underthrown, but McNutt with the big play. First and 10. From the 13-yard line, Coker up the middle. Lowered his head and went down inside the 10-yard line, tackled by Will Ebner, the middle linebacker. Missed three games this year with a broken bone in his foot. Yeah, Sean, when we talk about this Iowa Hawkeye team, and we said it's next man up. The recipe for Iowa does not change. As long as Kirk Ferentz is the head coach, they will do the same thing. They will be fundamentally sound. They will run the football, they'll run play action, and they'll take their shots occasionally, like you saw on that uh, on the big play to McNutt. Three wide receivers now for Iowa. And the tight end, Allen Reisner, in motion. Coker running hard. And that's one advantage with Coker in there as he made the six-yard line. Instead of Robinson, he is about 30 pounds bigger, a little bit more of a punishing, more physical runner than Adam Robinson. Yeah, and Robinson's a tough guy, but Coker, like you said, he is physically a bigger man. He has very good speed, good vision inside. You can see the little cutback, but he's about 220 pounds, about six foot. Very good feet in the hole. They don't miss much in the running game. 
is protection where he's going to have to come through. Rush for more than 400 yards coming in, and he's played in only six games. Third down and three for Iowa, the opening drive of the football game. Missouri brings a blitz. Coker ran away from it, and he appears to have the first down inside the three. Tackled by Brad Madison, a backup defensive end, but he plays a lot. Number 57, in fact, he's the team leader in sacks and tackles for loss. One thing you're going to notice about this Missouri Tiger team is they're not afraid to bring pressure. Defensive coordinator Dave Steckel is a guy who I've known for a long time, and he is a guy who's not afraid in any situation to roll the dice and bring pressure. What a great job he's done. Recent years, it's been the offense really carrying the defense of Missouri, but this year, the defense is the strength. Poker on first and goal. Wow, did he get stood up at the one-yard line by Kenja Jackson. The strong safety, very strong on that play. Well, you can see right here, they are outstanding in red zone defense. They Best lead the, the F country. Yeah, they, they lead the FBS, and, and again, they're not afraid to take chances. They'll bring, they'll bring blitzes from anywhere. They'll bring different people. They'll bring safeties, backers, even corners from anywhere on the field. Second and goal. Six runs by Coker and just the one pass. It was the long pass. It's a touchdown for Marcus Coker. Well, if you wondered about the mindset of Iowa, limping in here with a three-game losing streak and with the off-the-field troubles, there's your answer. They clearly came out ready to play. And they came out with the exact same recipe, Sean. It's never going to change. You're going to play Iowa. You need to play physical because they're coming off the bus being physical. Mike Meyer to try the extra point with Ryan Donahue holding. And it is good. Marcus Coker, the touchdown. He was involved in every play but one. It was the big pass to McNutt that set it up. Should I have all my policies with Nationwide Insurance? Bring in the parrots. Home um, auto. Life. You see, Jack, when your home auto and life insurance are with separate companies, they're just noisy, right? But when they work um, together... Beautiful. Nationwide Insurance can get your policies in sync and save you up to 25%. I didn't know they could sing like that. I hit it, fellas. Nationwide is on your side. Nissan's year-end event is almost over. Through January 3rd, get up to an additional 750 holiday bonus cash on capability and quality. Now, with bonus cash, get up to $47.50 off Titan or get 0% plus 500 bonus cash on Altima. Visit ChooseNissan.com or see your local Nissan dealer today. Hurry, holiday bonus cash ends January 3rd. Right now, when you buy one juicy original chicken sandwich at Burger King, you get a second one for free. It's more than a handful. It's a handsful. Buy one, get one free, only at Burger King. Nick, start your engine. They're the perfect team. I love you guys. Best friends. Come in here, don't ever let me go. But every friendship has its dilemmas. I just saw my best friend's wife with another man. <laughs> Awesome. From director Ron Howard. I have to fix it. Comes a comedy that doesn't pull any punches. Sorry! Something's going on with you. I got a great karate teacher. He really can teach you how to defend some of that. The Dilemma. Rated PG-13. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Inside Enterprise is proud to be the title sponsor of the 2010 Insight Bowl. Insight supports college football on and off the field with innovative technology solutions that enhance the educational experience for students globally. Join us in these efforts as one of our key partners, CA Technologies. CA Technologies is proud to be a sponsor of the Insight Bowl. From cloud to on-premise IT environments, our technology manages and secures organizations worldwide. We're excited to team with Insight to support college sports. Enjoy the rest of the Insight Bowl. And we thank all of the folks associated with the Insight Bowl for their great hospitality this week here in the Phoenix area. 
Dave Steckel has gathered the defense quickly. Time for some adjustments as Iowa came out running the football, Matt, on that drive. Eight plays, seven of them were runs by Marcus Coker, and the big play was the 49-yard pass to Marvin McNutt to get them into the red zone. Well, Mike Meyer kicks off. Speedy true freshman Marcus Murphy back deep for Mizzou, and he could not catch it. It'll be a touchback signaled by the referee Tom McCabe leading this Mid-American Conference crew. So here comes Blaine Gabbert. He's a junior, but there's been a lot of speculation this week about whether this will be his last game. He is well regarded by the NFL scouts, personnel people, and there are a number of them, including some general managers here tonight. Had an excellent year, 62% completions, throwing for 229 yards per game. 18 and 7 as the starting quarterback for Missouri. To spread offense, and they waste no time spreading the field with five receivers out of the shotgun. Gabbert to the far side, and a five yard gain to Wes Kemp. Plays the Z receiver position. He's their fourth leading receiver, his 33rd catch of the year. Missouri on offense, lacking the big play threat. They're running back by committee. We'll see four, including Devin Moore. And up front, a veteran offensive line that has 146 combined career starts. The center, Tim Barnes, the best, making his 39th straight start. There's Devin Moore turning the corner, and Tyler Sash shoved him out of bounds. There is a flag down back at the 35-yard line. He was shoved out at the 42. 17-yard gain if it stands. So we're going to hear from Tom McCabe for the first time tonight. Personal foul, number 66 on the offense. Unnecessary roughness. 15-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Austin Webbles, the junior, right guard. David Yost, the offensive coordinator, told us he's their most physical offensive lineman by far, and apparently he was a little too physical on that play. Well, play. Sean, by spreading the field, this offense is forcing you defensively to have to make all your plays in space. And they're counting on that space to be the ally of the offense. Well, they're back to the 20, second and 10. Gabbert with a receiver open along the far sideline. It's T.J. Moe for a gain of 12 and a first down, tackled by Sean Prater. T.J. Moe. Here's Iowa on defense, like Missouri in the top 10 in the nation in scoring defense, seventh, giving up 16 and a half points per game. Claiborne is the All-American leading the front group. They've been decimated by injury at linebacker. James Morris is a freshman and an outstanding secondary. Prater and Sash were both first team all Big Ten this year. West Kemp the catch, but it's a loss on the play of almost two yards. Troy Johnson made the tackle. For Iowa. One thing you'll notice with this Missouri Tiger offense is they're not afraid of negative plays because they know that they can get major yardage on any play. And the whole key is Gabbert. Gabbert is in control of this offense. Inside hand off to Devin Moore. He's their leading rusher, but has only 485 yards for the season. He averages 40 yards a game. He advanced to the 36 yard line. And they'll need seven more. David Yost is the offensive coordinator there in the middle of your screen with his hand on his forehead. Then with Gary Pinkle back to their days at Toledo together when Pinkle was the head coach there. Gabbert throws first down and perhaps more. Good run after the catch. It's Jarrell Jackson with his 42nd catch of the year. And Brett Greenwood made the tackle, but it's good for 12 and another first down. You're going to watch Jackson 29 and just working on a linebacker and that's you know that's a mismatch again this is Gabbard and one of the things when you're defending him you have to try to get pressure but he gets rid of the ball so quickly he's got a very good release which is attractive to the NFL he's on target to TJ Moe who shoved out of bounds near another first down at the 43 yard line by Jeff Tarpinian Gabbard's five for five John, what you also will notice is that he doesn't take a lot of shots down the field, and the reasons are simple. Doesn't have great speed out of his receivers. If he had that, he'd be even more dangerous. But they give you a variety of looks, 
and force you to have to line up differently all the time. So you're always matching personnel. How about this look? Five receivers all to the right. One of them comes back in motion. It's Devin Moore running back who took the handoff and got very little. Christian Ballard made the tackle. He's a part of that terrific front four. Gary Pinkle said it might be the best front four in the country that his Missouri team is facing. He also said this is the best seven and five team I've ever seen, Iowa. Yeah, because they've lost some very close games. They were in against very good, very good teams. But the strength of this defense is right here. It's that front four. And if they're going to play well tonight, that front four has to carry it. James Franklin in on third down and inches, and he got stopped. Looks like with the mark they're giving him from the far side of the field, they're going to give him a very nice mark and a first down. But Carl Klug stood him up and drove him back. Well, they're giving him forward progress across that yellow line, and it looks to be a first down for Missouri on the carry by the true freshman, James Franklin. You see Carl Klug, they were in a stunt, and Klug was looping around. Nobody picked him up, and he had a nice introduction <laughs> on that. Klug voted the team MVP along with Ricky Stanzi. They shared team MVP honors this year. Gabbard back in, missed on the exchange with Moe, and now he's in trouble, and taken down by Tyler Sash for a loss back near midfield. Well, Tyler Sash, when you talk about Iowa defense, number nine is always around the football. Now you can see the poor exchange, and then Gabbard's going to try to outrun him. But Sash just comes down as a safety out of the secondary. Again, great instincts, sees the football, had an outstanding year this year. First team all Big Ten was Sash for the second year in a row. Loss of nine on second and 19. Gabbard a deep ball. Incomplete. And over the head of his intended receiver. Marcus Lucas. You mentioned Matt they don't have the deep threat in recent years. This has been an explosive offensive team that kind of carry the defense this year they have to earn their way up the field no Denario Alexander who caught 113 balls last year and no Derek Washington who would have been their premier running back but he was picked off the team for an off the field episode prior to the year or a guy like Macklin they don't have that dynamic guy and so third and 19 it's not like you go to the third and 19 play shirt that's a play call round that's a tough one the officials have stopped the play and now they're no conferring Please reset the game clock to 6 15. And we congratulate Tom McCabe and the members of this Mid American Conference crew because it means these guys have had a good year too. Be rewarded with an appearance in a bowl game. So they've reset the clock and it'll be third down to 19. Five wide receivers, three to the right of Gabbard. Four man rush, and the ball's on target for a first down to the 26 yard line of Jarrell Jackson. 24 yard gain, and Gabbard is sharp with a lot of NFL personnel people on hand tonight. <laughs> oh, and by the way, all Dave Yost, the offensive coordinator, did he just dialed up that third 19 right off the play sheet, just like they drew it up. Jarrell Jackson just sits, finds a hole in the zone, and Gabbert and he are on the same page in a big first down. Six out of seven is Gabbert. Throws to the right again on target again. Another first down to Jarrell Jackson, the junior from Houston, Texas, who was injured at the beginning of the year, broke a wrist in the preseason, and has come on as the year has gone along. Watch the release. It's a quick release. It's short. His feet are always very good. He's in good position. He can make all the throws, very strong throws to the outside, the deep throw with touch. Exciting to watch. T.J. Moe was a high school quarterback, takes the direct snap, and they're ready for him. James Morris, the true freshman middle linebacker. It was fourth string when the season began, but 
Injuries kept happening to those ahead of him on the depth chart. And when Morris finally got the chance to play, he's been terrific. You know, Sean, we had the opportunity to watch this Iowa team three times in the season. And we saw when he first started and where he is now. This kid is an All-American in the making. He just needs to get bigger and stronger, but great instincts for an inside backer. Second and 11. Gabbard back in there. Over the middle. Caught short of the first down. Caught by John McGaffey. Just his sixth catch of the year. He's best known for returning the opening kickoff for a touchdown in their upset of then number one Oklahoma. That's when Missouri really started to get attention and respect around the country. Started the year 7 and 0, including that win over number one Oklahoma. They got as high as number six did BC, and the BCS did Missouri during the year. Third and two, and Gabbard straight ahead stretches out that six foot five inch frame, but he's short of the first down at the five, tackled again by James Morris. Well, that time, Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, he dials up a blitz and he brings it off the edge right in the slot. And so when they get down here, <laughs> both these defensive coordinators are rolling the dice. Nicely done. The blitz handles it and sets up the fourth down. Grant Russell, 17th play of the drive for Missouri. Fourth and short, Gary Pinkle sent the field goal kicker out, and he's just about automatic. Better than 93% for his career in field goals made. That's a 23-yarder, and the zoo is on the board. Well, we said it was going to be a physical football game, and it hasn't disappointed. They've gotten after a play-in, play-out, and they'll have more when we come back. Can you identify the root cause, even if the roots go deep? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you assure IT performance no matter how far down the issues are buried. CA Technologies. We can. Can you harness the power of the cloud without creating storms? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you manage and secure the cloud for greater business agility. CA Technologies. We can. It's time for the Bud Light Playbook. Today, how to avoid a costly fumble. Yeah, well, I blew out my knee. Did nope. you? Nice save. I use that sticky stuff that receivers used to use. Now I'll never drop my Bud Light. Here we go. I just got this new car. <laughs> hey, man. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Nissan's year-end event is almost over. Through January 3rd, get up to an additional 750 holiday bonus cash on capability and quality. Now, with bonus cash, get up to 4750 off Titan or get 0% plus 500 bonus cash on Altima. Visit ChooseNissan.com or see your local Nissan... ESPN College Football, the Insight Bowl, is brought to you by Insight, a proven provider of game-changing technology solutions for your business. And Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. Happy holidays. From our entire ESPN crew, we salute the hardworking members of our crew. Many of them had to escape bad weather all over the country to get here, particularly in the Northeast. Grant Russell will not kick off. It'll be Trey Barrow kicking off. And in the absence of Darrell Johnson Koulianos, that hurts Iowa's kickoff return. He was the best kickoff returner in the Big Ten this year. But here's a nice effort by Keenan Davis as he skipped his way across the 30 Davis to the 31 yard line. Tackled by Matt White. The 2011 Discover Iron Bowl, Monday, January 3rd on ESPN. The world is changing, and more is demanded of what we grow than ever before. How are we going to feed a rising population? How do we fuel all these cars? And how do we do it on less available land? 
Farmers will need equipment that gets the most out of every acre and advice from people at Case IH with experience in the field and eyes on the future. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. The 2011 Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Oklahoma hopes to avoid another BCS upset when they face the upstart Big East champion, Connecticut Huskies. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Connecticut, Oklahoma. New Year's Day on ESPN. The Fiesta Bowl lives here. Dick Sporting Goods presents ESPN The Weekend, the ultimate sports fan getaway at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Get up close with some of your favorite athletes and ESPN personalities. March 3rd through the 6th. Visit ESPNTheWeekend.com. The contrast of infinite black. The clarity of fast-switching phosphors. The smoothness of 600 hertz. All come together to create what CNET calls the best picture quality of any 2010 TV. The Viera Full HD 3D TV from Panasonic. Get a bonus Avatar Blu-ray 3D disc from Best Buy when you buy a Viera 3D TV. This year, there are 5,000 really good reasons to support the Valerie Fund. Each has a name, a unique personality, and a family who loves them. They're the children treated at the Valerie Fund Centers for Cancer and Blood Disorders, like solid tumors, brain tumors, leukemia, and sickle cell disease. Kids like Elijah and Kristen and Terrell. Every gift makes an impact. Every gift helps heal. Believe me, some of these kids are some of the bravest kids you're ever going to meet. So go to the website and get involved. Allstate is celebrating its sixth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarships funds. For each field goal and extra point kick, to date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.4 million in scholarship monies. We commend them for their great efforts. Iowa the ball in a 7-3 lead. Each team scoring in its opening possession. Ricky Stanzi with a blitz coming. Managed to stay on his feet. Now he takes off running. And he got about eight for his run down by Michael Sam. Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator, knew the blitzes would be coming tonight, and he has not been disappointed in his expectation level. Well, Missouri does a very good job of disguising the blitz, waits to the very last second, and has Stanzi right where they want him, but Stanzi just too strong for the tackle, runs through the arm tackle, and it's a big play for him. Not much of a runner, minus 15 yards for the season coming in. He's had a terrific year, so efficient. 25 touchdown passes and only four interceptions. Major improvement over last year when he threw 17 touchdowns and 15 picks. He's on target for a first down to Colin Sandeman, who got driven back from the 44-yard line by Kevin Rutland. Well, the difference in Ricky Stanzi from last year to this year, Sean, like you talked about, and it is the interception side and it's something they spoke about It's something he worked on through the whole offseason and it's one of those things that he started from the beginning of the season all the way through been very conscious of it he's been very good in his decision making and if the season ended right now he would set the single season record for pass efficiency at Iowa here's Marcus Coker with a good hole on the right he's chopped down at midfield after a gain of six here's Dari Noka in the studio guys want to make sure everyone's aware of what we have on the family networks right now of course we're watching football but on ESPN 2 North Carolina running away from Rutgers Iowa native Harrison Barnes eight points in the Tar Heels runaway right now at MSG and then Syracuse and Providence this was a four-point game literally about 30 basketball seconds ago, but Syracuse now up by 9, 22 points for Chris Joseph. Sean, Matt. All right, Dari, thank you. Syracuse undefeated, and Providence off to a very good start on the basketball court this year. Coker, about a half yard, got just across midfield, taken down by Marvin Foster. They really don't have anybody else that they can go to behind Coker. They were already thin. At running back when they had Adam Robinson and Coker. They thought Brad Rogers might be able to play some tailback today. He's ordinarily a fullback, but he's been having some cardiac testing and is unavailable to play tonight. Jewel Hampton was out for the year anyway with a knee problem and then decided to leave. Brandon Wager never played all year. 
Well, they've had depth issues all year in running back. Ken O'Keefe said we might use up all of Marcus Coker's four years of eligibility tonight. <laughs> Here he comes again, and he got stopped just short of the first down. Good tackle by Kip Edwards, and then help from Tavon Bolden. By number one. That is a very good tackle, and that's going to be that's going to be really and close to that first down. Tavon Bolden. But just watch, it's man on man. They, and then here comes Coker, but watch the form right there. Really well done. There's Ken O'Keefe. Now they're going to punt it. Now it's fourth down in inches. And Ken O'Keefe was hoping for a measurement there when you saw his expression. Now the play clock's running out. Three seconds for Ryan Donahue, four-year starting punter, bringing a terrific career to an end. Apparently, they just did get it off. Carl Geddes back for the punt, but it's into the end zone. Gavin will one bowl week continues tomorrow on ESPN with three games. First at 2.30 Eastern. East Carolina takes on Maryland in the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. And then at 6, the Fighting Illini face Baylor in the Texas Bowl. And finally at 9.15 Eastern, Arizona battles the 14th-ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys in the Valero Alamo Bowl. It's a Capital One Bowl Week triple header on ESPN tomorrow. All three games are also available online at ESPN3.com and on your phone. I don't call the State Arizona game. That's that's going to be some good offense there. That Oklahoma State offense. That's a fun offense to watch. It sure is. Probably the last play of the quarter and an errant pitch by Gabbert. Kendall Lawrence had to fall on it back at the 11-yard line. They've been a little bit sloppy in some of their exchanges. At the end of the first quarter, it's Iowa leading Missouri 7-3. Tostitos BCS National Championship game, January 10th on ESPN. It takes a team to deliver over 250,000 technology products. A team of experts to deploy networking solutions that fuel collaboration and protect your business. A team of skilled software specialists to manage your software needs around the globe. It takes a team of experienced professionals to implement technology solutions from the desktop to the data center. It takes insight to design, deploy, and manage your technology solutions. Nissan's year-end event is almost over. Through January 3rd, get up to an additional 750 holiday bonus cash on capability and quality. Now, with bonus cash, get up to $47.50 off Titan or get 0% plus 500 bonus cash on Altima. Visit ChooseNissan.com or see your local Nissan dealer today. Hurry, holiday bonus cash ends January 3rd. Excuse me. Your change. It's nice to know you can trust people. State Farm is counting on it. They want you to talk to your neighbors, then call a State Farm agent, find out how you can get discounts up to 40%. See, State Farm insures 40 million drivers. That's more than GEICO and Progressive combined. 40 million drivers, more savings, and discounts up to 40%. So call an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM or go online. Every day, thousands of people are switching from Tylenol to Advil. To learn more and get your special offer, go to TakeAdvil.com. Take action. Take Advil. Start your engine.
At Amway, our positive outlook comes naturally. We harvest healthy plant ingredients from our own organic farms, ingredients found in our Neutralite supplements, and offer more than 450 quality products from planet positive cleaners to botanically infused skincare. Positivity. Powering the products, the people, and the businesses of Amway. To learn more, contact an Amway independent business owner. You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. And we are very excited about that. Matt and I are going to stay out here in the beautiful Valley of the Sun for the Fiesta Bowl. Coming up on January 1st, part of our BCS coverage on ESPN. We welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime tonight, the 2010 Insight Bowl. It's Iowa leading Missouri. 7 to 3 at the end of one quarter. Missouri backed up at its own 11 yard line. Second down and 19. Lane Gabbard after the fake throws. Wes Kemp. To the 17, here's Heather Cox. Missouri's wide receivers coach Andy Hill spent the majority of the last possession talking to Blaine Gabbard and his receivers about creating more tempo, using a quicker first step, and beating Iowa's defense down the field. And guys, don't forget, Missouri spent the entire month of bowl prep working on getting their offense to attack more, be aggressive, go for the home run plays. We'll see if they go for it here. And just 45th in the country in total offense. Gabbard on third and 13, a little too high. Looked like it might have been catchable for Jarrell Jackson, but it certainly wasn't right on the money, and Missouri will have to punt. What we're seeing, Sean, is a contrast in styles. I mean, this is offense versus defense, this Missouri Tiger offense. This is kind of the new age offense. It's everything spread out. They're going to throw the ball all over the field. Well, on the other side, Iowa is going to just sit in their zones and they're going to force you to methodically work the field. That time, they only rush three, drop eight, and force you to have to throw into smaller windows. Matt Grabner, the senior putter. And Paul Cheney on the return. Tried to find room and could not. It was very well covered by Andrew Gatchkar, the leader of their defense, who's down there on punt coverage as well. We mentioned Iowa with great preseason expectations off a BCS Bowl win last year and a lot of their stars returning. Got off to an excellent start at 5-1. and one. The only loss was out at Arizona. But then the defense couldn't protect the lead. That became the story of their season. They lost their last three games. In four of their five losses, they had a fourth quarter lead. In the other one, they were tied in the fourth quarter. And then the bad news off the field after the end of the regular season. Darrell Johnson Culliano's arrested, Adam Robinson suspended, and then he was arrested last night. Adam Reisner, the reception, he's to the 38. Kenja Jackson chopped him down, a gain of six. Really a surprising year, and it's gotten a little bit ugly off the field here at the end. Yeah, and that, that's very uncharacteristic. I, I believe that Kirk Ferentz runs the, one of the best programs in all of college football. I think they do a great job recruiting. I think they do a great job with fundamentals. I think their football team, you get exactly what you want out of them. They're always physical. That is really surprising that they've had those problems. Marcus Coker through a hole. Can he break away? Yes, he can. Touchdown, 62 yards. about the fundamentals John and that's what that run was your fundamentals the offensive line parents an old offensive line coach he takes pride in that offensive front they got the job done job done and Coker followed through longest run of his career for Coker his previous long was just 26 yards there's Mike Meyer for the extra point and it is good Marcus Coker with 89 yards rushing already. And the Hawkeyes, the underdog, leading by 11 in the inside ball. I should be shouting. I should be holding balloons. 
I should be jumping in the air for maximum year-end event effect. But then, like you, I'd want to punch me. Now for the first time, get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. Meet me by the sea again Past the point the shoreline bends Where the sand is soft and warm And hangs upon your golden arm And time won't move at all Hundred dollars for a pair of jeans? Give me a break. I wear Lee Premium Select because they fit, they're comfortable, and they cost less than 50 bucks. And according to studies, I've been told they make my butt look good. Researcher. Getting comfortable never looks so good. Yeah, I grew up around here. TNT Tuesday, January 4th. Come on, come on, where'd you go? For the cops of the LAPD, every day is a struggle. I got it, I got it. Every minute a test. You gotta be able to trust who you work with. And every second, life-changing. It's the new season you've been waiting for. TNT Southland season premiere, Tuesday, January 4th at 10, on TNT Channel 245. Happy birthday! Thank you, dear friend. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm. You make me feel coming. so young. You make me feel so spring has sprung. <laughs> and every time I see you... You're not fooling anybody, you know. <laughs> Think young. Pass it on. <laughs> a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Marcus Coker with the touchdown. Good blocking by that Iowa offensive line. We talked with Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator for Iowa, a couple of days ago. He said, watching the films of Missouri's defense, very few teams were able to get long runs against them. He said Nebraska was the only team that he saw in film that broke a couple of long runs. Usually you have to earn it chunk by chunk on the ground against Missouri. Roy Hulu Jr. in that game did run for 307 yards for Nebraska. And their win over Missouri, one of the two Missouri losses. The other was at Texas Tech. Mike Myers kickoff run back by Marcus Murphy. Flag down. He's down at the 19-yard line. Tackled by Jason White. Tackled by number 86, C.J. Fedorowicz. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 10. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Now it's time for tonight's expert breakdown, brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Right there is an excellent block. You're going to watch the center. Watch Sparrows. He's going to come up. He's going to take away the backer on the inside. That's Xavier Gooden. Now, here's your free hitter right here. And that's Geddes, the corner. He needs to step up where he would have a chance. There is the miss right there. And then once he gets to the next level, he just outruns everybody. And here comes a little help from your friends from McNutt. Kendall Lawrence on first and ten for Missouri from the six-yard line. Got upended by Tyler Sash. Junior is Tyler Sash, but this could be his last game. He's another player who has put his name into the NFL for an evaluation. Opinion of where he would stand if he came out into the draft. So it's possible he could leave a year early. They've had a couple of players do that in recent years, including a defensive back, Amari Spave, now with the Detroit Lions. Three yard gain for Lawrence, the sophomore. Gabbert steps into the throw, and what a catch! Wes Kemp, a diving catch at the 41 yard line. Sean, that's as good a catch as we've seen all year. And if we had an All State good hands play, that would be it. <laughs> Just a fantastic job of stretching out and laying out good concentration and pulled it in. Kemp's a junior from St. Louis. There's Gabbert. 
He can run. Throws high. Another catch made. Jarrell Jackson up in the air. He got chopped down by Micah Hyde, but these receivers are making some plays for Blaine Gabbert right now. Well, now this ball's going to be thrown a little bit high. Now he does a nice job, A, of coming back and then holding on to it. Guarantee that didn't feel good on the bottom. But Gabbert, you mentioned it, Sean. He can throw on the run as well. Another guy who manages the pocket pretty well. He's their fourth leading rusher for the year. Kendall Lawrence, part of that running back by committee. They regularly use four different running backs. Broderick Binns and Brett Greenwood tripped him up after a gain of seven. Now the Missouri offense is starting to do what Heather was talking about. They're starting to get into their, into their rhythm, and they're quickening the pace. And when they are quickening the pace, they start to get that defense tired and on their heels. Gabbard handed it off inside to Lawrence. He's to the 40-yard line. Troy Johnson made the tackle for that injury-plagued linebacker unit. Coordinated by Norm Parker, and it's great to see Norm back in action tonight. He is in the press box, is calling the defenses. 69 years old, one of the great defensive coordinators of his era in college football. Had his right foot amputated, complications from diabetes back in September. Missed seven games, but he's back and back at work tonight. Orlandis Woodland couldn't make the catch on the throw over the middle. Very accurate throw, I may add. Woodland had a chance to come down with that. But again, like we said earlier, the one thing you notice about Garrett, he's not afraid of any situation. That could third and whatever. Second and 19, third and eight, third, it doesn't matter. He's not afraid to make the throw. He was recruited by Iowa for choosing to go to his home state university. He got hit by James Morris just as he threw it. And that's unusual. You very rarely see a blitz called by Norm Parker, but there's Morris, the linebacker, with a surprise for Gabbard. Yeah, and he came off the edge right into his vision, which is even, you know, more rare. But one of the things that they want to do is if they do bring a blitz, they want to be able to get him in the vision of the quarterback, so he has to manage that part of it. Paul Cheney, who's a track athlete at Iowa, back deep for the punt from Matt Grabner, who hits it high in the air. And the fair catch made by Cheney at the 13-yard line. Missouri got a great catch from Wes Kemp, but could not capitalize. Forced to punt, and they're still down by 11. Can you identify the root cause, even if the roots go deep? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you assure IT performance, no matter how far down the issues are buried. CA Technologies. We can. Can you harness the power of the cloud without creating storms? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you manage and secure the cloud for greater business agility. CA Technologies, we can. With the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase, so we had a trip to Vegas twice as fast. And since double miles add up fast, we can bring the whole gang. Is Caesar home? We get double miles every time we use our card, no matter what we're buying. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's hard to beat double miles. If anyone objects, let them speak now or forever hold them. Get the Venture Card from Capital One, Money Magazine's best rewards card if you aim to rack up airline miles. What's in your wallet? Can it go? Director Ron Howard Let's do it. invites you to a comedy wow. about the people we meet. That motor. When it started vibrating, if I was sitting on the hood of that car, I'm sorry. Run, run. The discoveries we make. It's not like I want to go and see Zip. Zip, that's the guy's name. Cowabunga, dude. And the rules we break sorry. in the name of friendship. Something's going on with you. You took my fish. I can't put a price on that because that's a, that's a friend. Although you can't pet it. The Dilemma. Rated PG-13. I should be shouting. I should be holding balloons. I should be jumping in the air for maximum year-end event effect. But then, like you, I'd want to punch me. 
Now, for the first time, get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. ESPN College Football, the Insight Bowl, is brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. What's in your wallet? The Dilemma, from director Ron Howard, starring Vince Vaughn and Kevin James, in theaters January 14th. And the touchdown big box only at Taco Bell. And welcome back to the Insight Bowl from Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Sean McDonough, Matt Mill, and Heather Cox. Our producer, Bo Garrett, better known as Wally Pip now after he arrived about an hour before kickoff out of the <laughs> Connecticut snow. <laughs> Our director, Mike Roig. Marcus Coker, he's been the star of the night so far. He rumbles for 11 more. That'll get him right up to 100 yards right on the button on just 12 carries. As he steps in for Adam Robinson, who was the fourth leading rusher in the Big Ten this year. Well, he's getting by with a little help from his friends, the old Beatles song. And who those friends are is that offensive line. Because right now, they are controlling the interior of that Missouri defense. They knew Coker had talent. They were reluctant to play him earlier in the year because he was just learning as a true freshman, particularly pass protection. He runs for about five. Then Adam Robinson started to get dinged up, suffered a concussion. They were forced to play Coker, and he's demonstrated, Matt, he's ready to go. Oh, he's Sean, he has very good vision. And I talk about some of these things. Okay, what does that mean? Right inside, he sees things and he can get there, okay? And that's easier said than done. It almost sounds too simplistic but he has very good feet very good vision if there's a little crack he's able to jump inside and he can still run with power Ricky Stanzi under duress has an open receiver but the throw too high for Alan Reisner the tight end senior playing in his final game and another excellent Iowa tight end he was one of the eight semifinalists for the John Mackey Award this is what I wanted to be able to see Coker do now the running part we knew he could do he had to be able to pick up the blitz and that's exactly what he did right there on Ebert coming inside on a Ebner rather on a uh, on a blitz just good toughness stuck his face up that's a nice test that's passed Third down and six three wide receivers for Stanzi nine and a half minutes to go first half just the four man rush and an open receiver and a first down Colin Sandeman out of bounds at the 41 yard line Kip Edwards chased him out a 12 yard pickup for the Hawkeyes yeah, Edwards is sitting on the outside and the, the, the linebacker underneath he's got to get more depth and width on that to take that away good protection Stan is able to find the hole Sandeman another of the 25 Iowa seniors playing in their final game for the Hawkeyes. They have a very big senior class. Would have been 26 if Johnson Koulianos had not been suspended. And another open receiver. It's Don Nordman. Deep down the depth chart and deep in the Missouri Territory at the 20 yard line. He's another guy getting more of a chance without Johnson Koulianos. A senior from Hopkinton, Iowa. That is just his second catch of the year and his fourth career reception, the longest of his career, 38 yards. Well, it all happens because A, he has good protection. Don't forget, this is a long developing route. He's coming all the way across the field. They clear the top side with the zone, run it out of there, and he's able to come all the way through because of the protection. First and 10, Iowa, where the Hawkeyes struggled down the stretch, but they've been very impressive here tonight. This is a proud program. Coker carries. And they're determined to make a statement here tonight with their play, and so far they've done it. A three yard gain there for Coker. John, this whole thing is, is courtesy of this offensive line. You know, you have Riley Reeves, 77, right there. Julian Vanderbilt, the inside, 63. Ferentz, 53, the center. And you have Keppel, 67. And Marcus Zuzovic, number 56. That's a good physical group, very well coached. They come off the ball nice and low. Right now, they're the difference in this game. And Keppel, a guy who came as a walk-on to Iowa. Stanzi. 
toward the end zone, deflected and incomplete. Off the hands of Xavier Gooden. Third he was looking for Brad Herman, the backup tight end. Again, nicely protected, has time. Gooden does a good job of it being in his zone and then getting just getting a hand on it to tip it. I'm not so sure that there would have been others who would have been able to defend it as well, but Gooden is able to get the tip and knock it down. Missouri, the best red zone defense in the country this year. Iowa, two out of three on third down tonight. Third down and seven. Stanzi with a blitz coming, one on one coverage. Incomplete pass for McNutt. Tightly guarded by Carl Geddes with his back turn. Iowa fans want a flag, they don't get it. Good coverage by the senior Geddes out of O'Fallon, Missouri. Well, they went pure man right across the board. And Geddes takes away the inside. That's well done all the way around. The ball could have been thrown better. Actually, had Geddes had the wherewithal to turn, he may have had a chance at a pick. Not a, not a well-thrown ball, but a well-defended pattern. His 50th consecutive start tonight for Carl Geddes that ties the Missouri record. Also held by the tight end Martin Rucker in the center, Adam Speaker. 34 yard field goal try from Mike Meyer. Another walk on who's had a terrific year. That kick is good. And Iowa leads by two touchdowns midway through the second quarter. Ricky Stancy and the Hawkeyes up 17 to 3. The 2011 Rose Bowl game. New Year's Day on ESPN. I should be shouting. I should be holding balloons. I should be jumping in the air for maximum year-end event effect. But then, like you, I'd want to punch me. Now for the first time, get 0% financing for 72 months on the 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. We're flashing through the snow on a winter wipeout day. Over the course we go. Wipeout premieres Thursday, January 6th. We're back in Tempe, Arizona. We remind you the Capital One Bowl Week continues on Thursday on ESPN. Fair games tomorrow, noon Eastern time. Army makes their first bowl appearance since 1996 against June Jones at SMU, and then at 3:20 Eastern, Kansas State and Syracuse in the inaugural. New Year Pinstripe Bowl. Great action tomorrow. Congratulations to my alma mater, Syracuse, by the way. You do say so yourself. On a bowl appearance. <laughs> Hopefully the whole team will make it there. They've had trouble getting to New York with the snow. Marcus Murphy brings back the kickoff. And I was so excited about that game, I jumped the gun on the promo. So here it is again. Army and SMU. That's our producer, Bo Garrett's alma mater, SMU. They're still waiting for Bo to maybe send a check into the alumni fund. And then K-State and Syracuse, 3.20 Eastern time, the inaugural pinstripe bowl from Yankee Stadium, a Capital One Bowl League doubleheader on ESPN on Thursday. Both of those games also available on ESPN Radio and online at ESPN3.com. And Gabbard is sacked. Taken down by Carl Klug. Back at the 10 yard line. That front four is good. They can generate a pass rush with just the four. And that's what they had to be able to do tonight, Sean, if they were going to get anything. Because Norm Parker's not going to do much blitzing. But Carl Klug, number 95, he just, nice little stunt on the inside, just wrapped around. Nobody picked him up. He came back with a sack. Second team all Big Ten this year. Senior out of Caledonia, Minnesota, small town just across the Iowa border. Gabbert looking to throw quickly and does to T.J. Moe. He's wrestled down by Sean Prater. One thing that this Missouri offense has not been able to do is get to third and manageable. They've been in second and long and third and long quite a bit here tonight. 
And for a lot of the year last in the Big 12 and third down conversions as you see 37 percent is good for only 83rd in the country. That's a surprising number for a 10 and 2 team. Gabbard a lot of time has a man open caught first down out at the 40 yard line T.J. Moe a 21 yard gain so they convert on third and long again. You're going to notice there's only three guys rushing in fact. They're just standing there. Way too much time. You're playing the zone behind. That allows T.J. Moe to sit down in the hole in the zone right there. Gabbert pulls it down. Has a one-yard gain. Klug got him again. Tackled by Klug. Forcing Blaine Gabbert to have to be patient. At times, he becomes a half the field quarterback. He only looks at half the field, and if it's not there, then he pulls it down. That was the case we just saw there. Going quickly, Gabbert dumps it off over the middle for T.J. Moe. He has another first down into Iowa territory at the 46. This T.J. Moe, Sean, he is a guy who sees the same thing that Gabbert sees, and Gabbert trusts him. And when I talk about holes in the zone, that's the void that's created between different defenders. Gabbert deeper this time and caught along the near sideline by Jarrell Jackson. And he's taken down to the 20, lost his helmet. He fought for every inch. Troy Johnson and Brent Greenwood combined to take him down. 26 yard gain for Jarrell Jackson. Well, you're going to watch Jarrell Jackson. Look at this. Here's the hole. Here's the hole in the zone. On top, in front of the, the safety coming over the top, and the, and the corner dropping. There's a void in between. That was a really well thrown ball. Gabbard over the middle had a man open John McGaffey and he just missed him. One of the few mistakes made tonight by Gabbard he said he's going to wait till after this game to figure out what he wants to do with an eye toward the NFL. He's a junior but did put his name in for an evaluation and right now Todd McShay has him as the second best draft prospect among the quarterbacks behind only Andrew Luck of Stanford and Locker Newton and Mallet. Gabbard on target again, far sideline. Brandon Giroux. You see that throw? I mean, that was from the other hash, completely across the field, on a line. I mean, that's a rope. That's a heck of a throw by Gabbard. That's not an easy throw to make. No, we asked Norm Parker, the Iowa defensive coordinator, yesterday about Gabbard. He said, well, he's smart. He has a strong arm. He's a very good athlete. He's a team leader. So there isn't anything I like about the guy. I have to go out there and play against him. Matter of fact, they did recruit him, and Norm Parker had a great quote. He said, Blaine Gabbard is everything you'd want in a quarterback and in your son. He's that kind of a young man. Timeout. Called by Iowa. First and goal for the Tigers. It takes a team to deliver over 250,000 technology products. A team of experts to deploy networking solutions that fuel collaboration and protect your business. A team of skilled software specialists to manage your software needs around the globe. It takes a team of experienced professionals to implement technology solutions from the desktop to the data center. It takes insight to design, deploy, and manage your technology solutions. A little more, and whoa. Yeah, nice. Agents, what do we have here? An autobotone. I've only heard about these. And? And we can save them hundreds by combining their auto boat and home policies all under farmers. Exactly. Are these legal? Define legal. Well, can you drive it on a street? Yeah. No. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. How do you come out of retirement to coach a bunch of mama's boys? Hey, your mama's not here to wipe away your tears or to give you a lollipop for your boo-boo. Hi, mama. Coach did get hurt by feelings. So what? And if you don't like it, maybe you ought to go back and live with your mama. Well? Coach, these are the Under Armour High School All-Americans. They, they do live with their mamas. Well, maybe I ought to drop this line about whining about your contracts, too, huh? I would. Ditka's back to coach the Under Armour All-America High School football game on ESPN. Hey man, how's my truck doing? Good. They're just changing the oil. We're in. Here we go. Come on, I'm gonna go check on the fellas. 
You guys almost done? Uh, it's gonna take a while. You're uh, leaking diesel fuel. It's not a diesel engine. Yeah, that's why it's so bad. It's the sure sign of a good time. The just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Mm. Hey, for all you math students out there, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Little Pythagorean theorem. And here's the throw. That's as good as it gets. That's a long throw on the money, on a line. It's a good, strong throw. And a nice use. Pythagoras would be proud. <laughs> Coaches are proud, too. 206 yards for Gabbert here in the first half. He's in and running back, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Missouri. That's a big drive to answer that score, Sean. But now they've been dominated here up to this point, and they've come back and answered to make it a one-score game. Henry Josie. Now that forehead running back platoon. He's a true freshman out of Angleton, Texas, with his fifth touchdown of the season. And the extra point up and good by Grant Russell. So Mizzou is within a touchdown with just under five minutes to go till halftime. A nine play, 82 yard drive capped by this touchdown. Just well blocked all the way around. Nicely done here. Nicely done here. And then watch the block on the safety. That clears everything. Good job by Michael Egnew as well. 82. That's a big score. You saw Justin Britt, number 68. He's a backup. The freshman, they think he has a bright future. Dave Yo said he's as talented athletically as any offensive lineman they've ever recruited. Well, that was a. Just an excellent block, stayed with it the whole time. He was the key. Like what David Jones told us about Britt as well, he said he knew everything about all of his players. He said when Britt was born, he weighed 11 pounds, 8 ounces. He was the largest baby born naturally in southwest Missouri in years. His mother was proud to make that statement. Dave Barrow kicks off. Paul Cheney Jr. elected not to bring it out from only about a yard into the end zone. And now a look at tonight's positive performance brought to you by Amway. Did the offensive line and Coker, and he's been pounding up on the inside. And when they've had to have a big play, they've gone to Coker all night long to move the chains and to be physical. And again, it's been that offensive line and Coker right behind him. And oh, by the way, if you need a big run, they went to him as well. His rush for 108 yards. His career high is 122 at Indiana in a narrow win. He started that game. Adam Robinson was battling concussions. First down just across the 30 yard line, run out by Kevin Rutland, a gain of 11. Oh, so Ricky Stanley said, hey, there's more than one quarterback playing in this game. So they came with pressure off the side, and he felt it, and he was right on time with an accurate throw for another first down. Now, he is not as highly regarded a pro prospect as Gabbert but Kirk Ferentz says he's going to play in the NFL make a team and play for a long time. Yeah he'll he'll play and he has the tools. He doesn't have as strong an arm or as quick a release but he certainly has the ability to be able to go to the next level. Lindsay is senior out of Mentor Ohio not highly recruited out of high school mostly mid-American conference schools after him. Coker wrapped up at the 35 yard line by Will Ebner. Stanzi has the size at 6'4", 230. He's been very accurate, 65% this year. And on target tonight, hasn't thrown it much. They've been leaning on the run, and why not, with the success of Coker behind that line. Yeah, and that's that's their recipe. That's what we said right from the beginning. That's not going to change. I mean, the, this Iowa offense is going to be the same. No matter who the players are, the philosophy remains the same. High formation now with 
Morris in front of Coker, and Missouri stops Coker for a one-yard gain. Here's Heather Cox. You guys were talking about Ricky Stanzi. He's had dramatic improvement this year. Last year, he threw 15 picks. This year, just four. In fact, he joked that his football <laughs> IQ might have been in the single digits at times last year. You know, he said he worked very hard on studying himself on film on the offseason, and that he's processing things faster, and he's willing to drop back and, and get things and take smaller chunks at a time and not take as many risks and it certainly paid off for him. Going to end his career third all time in passing yardage at Iowa behind only Chuck Long and Drew Tate. Third down and five. Deep down the middle for McNutt. It was a high throw. There was some contact. No flags down. Kip Edwards had the coverage. Didn't look to be a catchable ball high and over the head of McNutt. Yeah, and this was going to be a very tight window. Edwards is on the top side, really did a nice job. And Kenja Jackson, the safety, he was zeroing in. Had that ball been thrown a little bit lower, there may have been a major impact on the end of that play. Ryan Donahue to punt. Carl Geddes back for it. It and Geddes fell on it at the 16 yard line. January 1st, 2011 marks the official start to the year of the quarterback, and it'll be toasted with a live show from San Diego on New Year's Eve. We'll take a look back to the best moments of the quarterback position in 2010. Look ahead to 2011. You can catch live interviews with current NFL quarterbacks, a new perspective on the position from the sports science team, and a sneak peek at the Tim Tebow documentary which follows his path from college to the NFL New Year's Eve year of the quarterback countdown beginning at 11 Eastern New Year's Eve on ESPN Lane Gabbard to TJ Mo first down a gain of 11 and we talked about the struggles of the Iowa defense late in games Norm Parker said it was the year of the quarterback in the Big Ten he said you have to give credit to the opposition they played a lot of terrific quarterbacks who led their team back against Iowa in the fourth quarter. I think overall the Big Ten had a very good year all the way around. Gabbert finally decided to surrender back at the 20-yard line with Christian Ballard nearby. Let's check in with Dari Noka in the studio. Well, guys, I want to tell you what's coming up on the Cars.com halftime report. Mark May, Lou Holtz, they're going to join me. We're going to show you what happened in that champ sports bowl nc state impressive performance west virginia not so much also hear from the buckeye and yeah, the one suspended for the game this disposes all right dari thank you it's gabbard to tj mo again and mo's back near the original line of scrimmage the 27 yard line anthony hitchens made the tackle He's a freshman, ordinarily a defensive back, but he's seen some time at linebacker because they're so depleted. He only started playing linebacker about two weeks ago. Third down and 12. Can Gabbert convert another long one? Yes, he can. What a throw to Jarrell Jackson. Heck of a throw. Well, if the NFL guys came tonight to see him. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting what they came to yes, see. Yes, indeed they are. Watch and... Now watch the patience. He knows where he wants to go. On the top side route, he has a crossing route. And so the top guy clears. You see it? And now he's going to come back outside. He waits for Jackson to get there. And the ball's just where it has to be. 96 yards receiving for Jackson in this half on six catches. Down to a minute 20 to go. In the half, T.J. Moe, nice move after the catch to get the first down. He also got out of bounds. Far sideline at the 48-yard line. Mizzou with all three timeouts left. A minute 17 to go in the half. That T.J. Moe, you know, when you watch the tape of him, you go, well, he doesn't run that well. No, he's a steady receiver, but he knows exactly where he has to be all the time, and Gabbert trusts him. Agnew, the catch. That is the first of the game for Egnu, who leads all tight ends around the country with 84 catches now. Well, he's really a tight end in label only. He's more of a split end than a tight end. Timeout, Missouri. They have two left.
University of Missouri alumni know, the road to success is paved in black and gold. Z-O-U. Z-O-U. Though you leave Mizzou, Mizzou will never leave you. Z-O-U. Forever. Unsurpassed literary stature. Unprecedented medical breakthroughs. Life-changing scientific discovery. Soaring artistic achievement. With an indelible legacy and an extraordinary future, the University of Iowa is a top-tier public institution that truly is transforming lives. Both of these fan bases well represented in Tempe, Arizona tonight. Iowa and Missouri, a battle of the black and gold. And the house divided there. <laughs> these bordering stakes, they recruit a lot of the same players. Kirk Ferentz said, we recruited Blaine Gabbert. We held hands with him, but we were never engaged. Gabbert throws near side. Wes Kemp looked like he got the first down with that turn and run after the catch. He's to the 36-yard line. 53 seconds to go in the half. Nicely done by Kemp. You know, the, the Hawkeyes are trying to do, to defend the sidelines. And Kemp was still able to not only make the catch but get out of bounds on the sideline. How about that half for Gabbert? 262 yards. The season high is 361 for a game. We're not done yet. Against Texas A&M. Got a long way to go tonight. He's going a long way down the field and a catch. Jarrell Jackson near the 15-yard line. That he got popped by Brett Greenwood, but held on. Yeah, Sean, that is such a good throw. I want you to watch again. On top of this defender and in front of this defender. And the ball is, I mean, that's surgical. That's as good as you get. Look at his feet. Steve Young's always talking about the feet of the quarterback determines the throw. His feet right there are as good as it gets. First and ten. Goes to the right. And threw it away. Gavin Smartly so. Second down. There's a lot to like about him tonight, oh didn't boy. it? You it know, sure he, is. Talk about the fundamentals of the quarterback position. His feet are always in good shape. He stays in balance. He has a nice release. He doesn't overstride. He has a strong arm. He can, can throw all the spots in the field. He has the wherewithal to know where he's at on the field. What's impressed me the most tonight, though, Sean, he's been in third long quite a bit, and he's converted. Second and ten. As usual, the four-man Iowa rush. I throw off the hands of his receiver and incomplete. Third down. He was looking for Giroux. And it'll be third down and ten. Another one. Another third and long. converted three times on third down and nine or more already tonight. Here's third and ten. And get a first down at the four-yard line. To the end zone. Juggled and intercepted. Picked off by Brett Greenwood. It went off the hands of Jarrell Jackson. And Greenwood, the senior in his last game, has his 12th career interception. Sean Crater right on top of that, Sean. Very good coverage. Watch Prater, 28, trying to hold the inside. Comes back inside, gets his hand in there, and then it's popped up and down. And then the, the subsequent pick. John Prater made a nice play. Well, he had a terrific year. First team all Big Ten at cornerback. First interception of the night for Gabbard on his 31st throw. 18 interceptions now for Iowa. Stanzi takes a knee, and that'll send Iowa to the dressing room with the lead at the half. Looked like Gabbard had them poised for the tying score, but Prater and Greenwood made a big play, and here's Heather Cox. 
John, thank you. Coach, you came in on a three-game losing streak with some very tough off-the-field distractions. How did you get your team so focused for the quick start? You know, those games were, uh, you know, they were a while back. So we've uh, moved on. We turned the page, been focused on the guys that are here on the trip, and, uh, you know, playing this game. And one of those guys, Marcus Coker, has been phenomenal. Over 100 yards already in this first half. How much can you continue to rely on him? Well, you know, he's got a scholarship, too, and he's a good player. we got a lot of faith in him, and uh, everybody's working hard. Coach, thank you. Well, Kirk Ferentz said coming in, he was very pleased with the attitude and practices, and, and you can see it's paying off tonight. They lead by seven at the half. Let's send you back to the studio for the Cars.com halftime report. Woo, that interception stings if you're a fan of Missouri. Welcome in. Cars.com halftime report. Dorian Oak, Lou Holtz, Mark May, 17-10. Hawkeyes, and Lou, I, you said... Let's make this the beginning of a brand new season. They have come out and made this the beginning of a brand new season. Well, anytime you finish your season as poorly as what I would did, you really <laughs> have a desire to start all over again. And then, of course, the off-the-field problems they had, I just think they got them straight. But I also want to say this about Gabbard. You know, he's thrown for 200 some yards. That's a very good Iowa defensive secondary. They're 18th in the country on pass defense efficiency, and yet he has picked them apart, Mark. Well, I look at this Iowa offense, and they're down to a freshman running back in Marcus Coker, and the reason why is because of suspensions and transfers. He's about fourth on their depth chart, but the reason why they can go to a freshman is their offensive line is spectacular, particularly at the point of attack and on the backside. And look at Marvin McNuck, number seven, right there, get that block. They're extremely well coached. The Kirk Ferentz offensive line will always have success no matter who they play these two teams don't give up many points one gives up 15 a game one gives up 16 Missouri 15 Iowa say I mean th this is a, a slugfest of a first half likely gonna see the same thing in the second half the way these offenses have found their rhythm you think well it'll come down to the team that makes the fewest number of mistakes you know yeah. you had the interception you might have fumble here or there. but they're both playing hard and they're glad to be there but I think Iowa has something to prove and uh, anytime you have something to prove you play a little bit harder both quarterbacks will have big second half yeah, it's gonna be a fun one to watch mm -hmm. much more fun than the first one right. we had to watch champ sports bowl what did you miss well, you missed one team that wanted to be there and another maybe not so much we're back If you're really serious about entertainment, every detail counts. Your favorite food's fighting you. Fight back fast with Tums. Calcium rich Tums goes to work in seconds. Nothing works faster. Tum, ta, tum, tum, tums. Proud to stand on our own. Proud to be home. May, Holtz, Noka at the half. How about the Champ Sports Bowl? First game of the evening. Tom O'Brien looking for his 100th career win as a head coach. NC State, West Virginia, Russell Wilson to Mustafa Green. Green's only catch, 16-yard touchdown. Good start pass. Yeah, Russell Wilson started this game pretty hot. Got great protection by his offensive line. Second quarter, Mountaineers tie it up. Watch the play, watch the throw, watch the catch. Stedman nice. Bailey from Geno Smith. What do you think of that coach catch? That catch coach? That was outstanding, but there wasn't enough of them. Easy for you to say. Oh, boy. Turnover. Easy for Mountaineer Nation to say. 
How about five of them in all? They looked horrible, particularly in the second half. But let's give let's give NC State enough lot of credit. They didn't play particularly well in the last game against Maryland. They came here ready to play, and obviously West Virginia wasn't. Right. Interesting situation, too, with West Virginia. And that man, Bill Stewart, he's got one more year before Dana Holgerson takes over as head coach in 2012. Look at Wilson, though. This is what he's so good at. Look at the time that he bought. And he usually had time most of the night anyways. This time, this is all him. Touchdown, Jarvis Williams. Outstanding play by the quarterback, Russell Wilson. So, Tom O'Brien and NC State get the win. He gets his 100th career win as a head coach. West Virginia, boy, oh boy. First time all season they allowed more than 21 points in a game. Yeah, but they got three season highs. Yeah, yeah five turnovers. In the one wrong <laughs> but wow, we could win three season highs. Tough to win a game when you turn the ball over five times. Five times. NC State, only one turnover on the night. Meanwhile, those five Ohio State Buckeyes, including Terrell Pryor, they can not play for the first five games of next season, but they can play in the Sugar Bowl. Terrell Pryor, Devere Posey, a couple of those. They spoke today apologizing to Buckeye Nation in Columbus. We wanted to apologize to you guys so that uh, you guys heard it from us and not from, you know, you guys don't read about it or you guys see it on TV, but we wanted you guys to hear our apology ourselves. It hurts me deeply to have put my teammates through this, um, my family, and The Ohio State University. I promise to return for my senior year to be a leader on and off the field. Uh, I'm deeply sorry about uh, the, the young selfish mistakes I've made uh, two years ago and uh, to bring down this university and uh, bring embarrassment to myself and the coaching staff and uh, former players and the alumni, especially, and uh, even the students and uh, Buckeye Nation uh, mostly. And uh, just my selfish acts was just uh, very young and immature and uh, I'm just very deeply sorry about it. That was, by the way, wide receiver Devere Posey, who said he would be back in Columbus next season. If I had some sort of a golf tee or a tee ball tee, I'd use it, and I'd just set a big ball right on top of it. I'd say, Mark May, go. I know you're not huge on the fact that they are going to get to play against Arkansas. No, I'm not, and I think head coach Jim Trestle might want to sit back and look at this and make a decision on this and maybe not play these players because when you look at the big picture of this, it's a black eye for college football. It's definitely a black eye for Ohio State University and the Buckeyes, but I think when you look at the bigger picture again as a former athlete, all the work, all the sweat, all the toil that you put in to strive to be a good maybe even a great player and to do some great things by winning a conference championship, beating Michigan, getting those gold pants. Someday you're going to look back on this and you're going to reflect on this and you're going to sit there and say, you know what, I did do something stupid. I can't believe I made that mistake. I wish I had that opportunity over again. They are going to play for five football games next fall. They didn't steal them. They didn't rob anybody. They sold something they had. Yeah, it's wrong. Yes, they're going to pay a price. But I think five games, being asked to sit down and not play. You look at a guy like the quarterback, Terrell Pryor. His chance to win the Heisman next year over. You aren't going to win in only seven football games. I think the penalty is plenty severe. I do not think. Coach Russell should take any further action. So it was their property and they sold it. Tell that to A.J. Green from Georgia. Yeah. He sold his jersey and immediately he was suspended starting the season of play. The next game that was played, he was not allowed to play. Tell me that's fair. It, it is baffling. You miss five games. It's that egregious, yet not the next one. Well, you're going to skip one and then you're going to miss five. It's I, I, I agree with you, but I just, to, to say, well, you should be able to play this game, no, no. That, that penalty is too severe on it. I think it... Uh, I just think it's too severe, period, because it belonged to those people. Now, if you sold it to an Ohio State alum, that's different. Oh, and I tell you, you would have never sold anything. I've got every, oh, I've got no, every no. award that I've ever won in collegiate ball, even in high school. I would never consider selling that unless it was a dire situation for my family. But when I'm I, going to keep them till the day I die. Hey, when I played at Kent State, guys would steal socks and sell them to the fraternity brothers. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> I did do that. Unbelievable. That's what I'm saying is that's just life. <laughs> So now we know. <laughs> not yeah. me. Yeah, hey. I thought you knew everything about Lou Holtz. Yeah. Now you know one more thing than you knew before. I might have my wallet still. My socks had oh, holes God. in them. You can't God. sell those. I wore those Kent State socks <laughs> last night, by the way. Thanks very much. <laughs> Wes Kemp, how about a catch for M I Z Z O U? But they trail Iowa by seven. We're back in a moment, don't you? From an early age, Timothy Richmond understood that with knowledge comes confidence. In junior high, while abroad, he explained how jellyfish stings can be neutralized with vinegar. In perfect Italian. 
As an adult, Timothy's knowledge of storm cells and tornadoes saved the Newbury Prep cheerleading squad. But when it came time to buy a new car, he was just as nervous as the rest of us. So Timothy got his knowledge at cars.com, regained his confidence, and got the perfect car at the perfect price. At Case IH, we know successful farming is about being ready. Ready with the right equipment, technology, and support. And right now, we're helping you be ready for next season in a big way at the Case IH Big Red Event. Pre-order new 2011 delivered Case IH tractors, combines, and sprayers at some of the biggest savings of the year. You'll find 2010 models priced right, too. Like we said, it's big. The Case IH Big Red Event, going on now at your Case IH dealer. That's right, it's a beefy crunch burrito. And yes, it's loaded with flaming hot Fritos chips because I don't like playing it safe. I'm a wild man, but also responsible because it's just 99 cents. So why don't you turn around one more time? I dare you. Oh boy, now what? The new 99 cent beefy crunch burrito. The crunch of flaming hot Fritos chips, seasoned beef, and nacho cheese sauce. All for just 99 cents at Taco Bell. All right, time to get you caught up on what's happening on Sports Center right now. Eagles, Vikings, game pushed back two days because of bad weather in the Philly area. Brett Favre inactive. Joe Webb the start. Michael Vick the start, but you already knew that. Oh boy, Antoine Winfield, the strip and the six. Go ahead, Mayday. Terrific job by Winfield, keeping his eye on the ball and making something happen with the play. Michael Vick couldn't get to his feet to tackle him. Four, 17, 14 Vikings. Adrian Peterson, touchdown. Minnesota beats the Eagles. That guarantees the Bears the two seed and a first round bye in the NFC playoffs. How about Knicks and Heat? Uh, some stars here LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosch, Amari Stoudemire. LeBron. That's a high percentage shot for him. Yeah. 18 and 10 for LeBron. It would help if they played a little defense against him. Yeah, it would help. Dwayne Wade there. Heat up 19 13 on the Knicks. Dwayne Wade, a huge night. Proof in a moment. Chris Bosch. Ooh. He had 18 points, 10 rebounds. Fourth quarter, Knicks down 11. Where's Amari? There's Amari with 30 in the game. But how about Dwayne Wade? 40 points on the night. Heat wins by eight. Over the Knicks. It'd be fun if this was a playoff matchup. Could be. You know? This halftime report is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. Three bowl games on Wednesday. How about the military bowl, Maryland in East Carolina? Maybe. Keep an eye on the freshman quarterback, Danny O'Brien. He was ACC Rookie of the Year. This is an offense that scored 38 points or more five times this season. They're going against East Carolina, the worst defense in the NCAA. They're 120 at the total defense. Baylor bowling first time since 1994. They don't have to go far down to Houston to face Illinois. Coach. Oh, I tell you what, uh, Robert Griffin the third. This guy's a tremendous athlete. Had a great year. Art Browns who came here from Houston, done a tremendous job with Baylor and now you look at a guy like Jay Finley 96 yards rushing they are a very explosive football team Baylor is. Guys like offense how about the Valero Alamo Bowl Oklahoma State and Arizona man. number one total offense in the country how about Justin Black on the wide receiver in every game he played in this year 11 he's had at least one touchdown and 100 yards receiving in each game 151 yards he averages per game 18 touchdowns on the season don't forget about his running back Kendall Hunter 126 yards on the ground per game the real deal is that Oklahoma State offense. Nick Foles, pretty good, too, for Arizona. How about Marcus Coker? 16 carries, 113 yards, two touchdowns for the Hawkeyes, who lead Missouri 17-10 in the Insight Bowl. Back in a moment. Thanks to the Venture Card from Capital One, we get double miles on every purchase. So we under trip to New Orleans twice as fast. We get double miles every time we use our card. No matter what we're buying. I'll take it. And since double miles out of fast, we can bring the whole gang. Fire! It's hard to beat double miles. Have you seen guys? Oh! Get the Venture Card from Capital One. Money Magazine's best rewards card if you aim to rack up airline miles. What's in your wallet? Baby, 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 baby. Our breakout session is going to be great. Got the Gecko T-shirt, four million drivers switched. Gecko water bottle, notebook, chamois. Sir, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with all, you know, all this. 
I mean, it's not about me. It should it be about how Geico's the third largest car insurance company in the nation? Things like that. Oh, of course. We're not going to get carried away. Uh, yeah, all right. As long as we don't overdo it. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Right now, the NCAA is building over 400,000 future professionals. And most of us will go pro in something other than sports. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema. Range? 175 meters. Target? One. Can you do it? You've got a long list of enemies, Jack. It doesn't add up. Someone tracked me down. on direct tv cinema same day as blu-ray and dvd movie started channel 125 now playing on direct tv cinema nobody fights crime like these guys and then there's the other guys i think you're a fake cop you're probably a little insecure from the director of Step Brothers and talladega Nights. let me just apologize in advance for my wife she's a battle axe hi who are you i'm his wife this is a ball and chain Ooh. seriously who is that the other guys Movie start at channel 125. Welcome back to the Cars.com Halftime Report. We want to remind you, and you probably already know this, the ESPN Family Networks is your place to be on New Year's Day for all your college bowl action. We have six games, including three Big Ten SEC matchups and the first two BCS games. Don't forget, College Game Day kicks it all off 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU and 11 a.m. on ESPN. Henry Josie for Mizzou, pulling the Tigers to within seven, but a late interception kept it that way. Hawkeyes up a touch, second half next. This halftime report is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. From an early age, Timothy Richmond understood that with knowledge comes confidence. In junior high, while abroad, he explained how jellyfish stings can be neutralized with vinegar. In perfect Italian. As an adult, Timothy's knowledge of storm cells and tornadoes saved the Newbury Prep cheerleading squad. But when it came time to buy a new car, he was just as nervous as the rest of us. So Timothy got his knowledge at Cars.com, regained his confidence, and got the perfect car at the perfect price. A lot of people don't think food companies are very honest about the source of their ingredients. Do you think Domino's wants you to know where their ingredients come from? You should have the right to. You deserve to know what they're using? Yeah. Actually, we do want you to know. This is one of the farms where Domino's gets tomatoes for their sauce. This is Roger. He's a tomato man. Reach down and grab a fresh one. This is all natural, vine-ripened tomatoes, all grown in California. Want to know where Domino's ingredients come from? We'll show you. See a source of our tomatoes and more at BehindThePizza.com. And get two mediums with two toppings for $5.99 each. We are harvesting tomatoes! You can always find a positive opportunity when you know where to turn. With Amway, there's opportunity to pursue another path. Where products created for healthier living and the ability to own your own business can help you take steps toward financial freedom. That's the power of positive. That's Amway. To learn more, contact an Amway independent business owner. You're watching ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed sports history being made.
Okay, and we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime in the 2010 Insight Bowl from Tempe, Arizona. Record crowd on hand at Sun Devil Stadium for the 22nd Insight Bowl. More than 53,000. In house, they watched a very entertaining first half. We welcome you back to Tempe. Sean McDonough and Matt Millen rejoined shortly by Heather Cox. Played like a champion, the song. A lot of uh, terrific championship type performances in that first half. Yeah, and when you looked at it, and it came from where we expected to, Sean. So for the Iowa Hawkeyes, the offensive line, Marcus Coker, did what they were expected to do. Stanzi made timely throws. They moved the ball, and were able to score. And Blake Gabbert has been the story of this first half. Throwing for, geez, almost 280 yards in the first half. He had the pick at the end zone uh, at the end of the half. And right now, they'll get the ball back first. This first drive is going to be a big drive for this uh, Missouri team. Marcus Coker was the star for Iowa. Gabbert threw for 284 yards officially in that first half. But it will be Iowa kicking off with Mike Meyer to put foot to the ball. And the second half is underway. Short kick down to Marcus Murphy near the 10. And he's out to the 30. Let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Marcus Coker got Iowa off to a great start. It's his second career 100-yard rushing game. He had a 62-yard touchdown run. And Jarrell Jackson frequently on the receiving end of those passes from Gabbert. And just when it looked like they were going to tie it up late in the half, the deflection, Sean Prater, great defense. Brett Greenwood, the interception. And Iowa went off with a seven-point lead. They led by as many as 14 in the first half. Gabbert firing to West Kemp. Ten-yard gain. Appears to be a first down. Sean Prater, the tackle. Here's Heather Cox. Sean, it was a very emotional, very intense, very vocal locker room for Missouri. In fact, Gary Pinkle was so loud that about half of the team that had to stay in the hallway because the visitors' locker room was so small could still hear everything that he was saying. The big frustration is their inability to stop the run. Remember, this is a red zone defense that has led the nation. Gary Pinkle needs to see improvement in the second half. Henry Josie carries for a couple. Adrian Claiborne in on the stop with Jeremiah Hunter. They're not accustomed to being behind at the half. Only the third time this season. You know, that's probably one of the undertold stories nationally in college football. The success of this Missouri program in the last four years. They've now won 40 games in the last four years. They've averaged 10 wins a season in the last four. But you don't hear a lot about them around the country, and you should. He's built it into a solid program that's starting to recruit at a higher level. They've upgraded facilities, and it looks like they're going to be a player on the national stage for a long time. There's no question about what Gary Pinkle has done here, and he did it the right way. And he came in, and he started, and they, they massaged their schedule a little bit. And then once they were able to start recruiting and getting, they've been getting receivers, they've been getting a lot of offensive players. And now they have some speed on their defense. This, is, this program is going to be at the top for a while. They put a premium on speed and recruiting, which played to a lot of other teams. Gabbard is flushed, being chased by Klug. He got a hand on him and got him across the boundary. Oh. A good defense by Iowa. They'll force an early punt. Caledonia loves Carl Klug, but so do the Iowa Hawkeyes because he has played, he's had a great career here. He's a tough guy. He's smart. He gives you everything he has all the time. He's no quitting him. He's, uh, he's a little bit undersized at 270 pounds for an interior guy. He will get bigger and stronger, and he'll have a shot at the next level. That Grabner punts. He's a former walk-on. Was playing club soccer in Missouri. His buddies encourage him to try out for the football team he did he became their starting punter and a very good one and that punts out of bounds after 55 yards at the three yard line but Paul Cheney cannot let that ball hit the ground it's one of the one of the cardinal sins of, of the kicking game you don't let the ball hit the ground he's got to do whatever he can to try to get to that thing that being said that is a heck of a kick right on the edge There's Iowa on offense for the first time in the second half. Poorest field position of the night from their own three. Marcus Coker. 
To the six, Will Ebner made the tackle. Tackle. Boker from the Baltimore, Washington area, Beltsville, Maryland, the Matha Catholic three, High School. Seven at the six. He was consensus all state in Maryland in one game last year, ran for 392 yards and five touchdowns against Baltimore's Gilman School. That's a big night. That's a big night at any level. I don't care where you're at. Drove with his mom 18 hours on his recruiting trip to Iowa. He's out near the first down marker, about a yard short. He said one of the things that attracted him to Iowa was the success of Sean Green. Dope Walker Award winner now in the NFL with the Jets. He thinks he's a similar kind of back. And that's a to good Sean call. Green. Yeah, good call by him. They are kind of similar. Now Sean Green's a little thicker than him. This kid's just a freshman, but the same type of style. He's a little faster than him, but physical, and he attacks. He attacks defenders. Third down and one. They went relatively quickly, and Coker bounces off the hit, and there he goes again. Run down from behind by Xavier Gooden. Help from Carl Geddes, but another long run, and it's a career night for Marcus Coker in just his seventh game of college football. 35 yards on this play. Did I mention that he attacks defenders? Right there. Run right over Jarrell Harrison, just physical. Lower the pad level, kept his feet moving. This is how you attack. All you high schoolers out there, that's called running behind your pads, and that's really well done. 157 yards on 19 carries for Coker. He has both of their touchdowns tonight as well. Stanzi, short throw, rare drop by Adam Reisner, by Alan Reisner, the tight end. Xavier Gooden you know, in coverage, but he usually catches that one. Sean, we talked about tight ends and who are tight ends and what a tight end has become. This is an old school tight end. Reisner can block at the point, he stays inside. He runs well enough, has good hands. This is going to be a kid who does well at the next level. He can be an H-back. He can be on the line. He can move. Good player. One catch tonight. They love their tight ends. Tony Boyaki, Dallas Clark among the standouts who have played there. Keenan Davis the catch. Kirk Ferentz said, when we lose a game, my wife Mary always says the same thing. You didn't throw the ball to the tight end enough. So apparently <laughs> exactly. Mrs. Ferentz is a big fan of tight end play. Well, she's a she's the unofficial OC. She's yes. the offensive coordinator. And she knows she's been around football a long time and she's been listening to what he says about football. And so when she hears what he says he wants to do and doesn't do it, he hears about it when he comes home. Parents is of five children, including the starting center, James, the fourth of their five kids. Ryan Ferentz is also a standout player. There's James. Nice adjustments. Really nice. Except it took too long. The clock went to zero. Defensive coordinator Dave Steckel waited to the end. They got to the line of scrimmage, and then he shifted it. And then that's when Ferentz was trying to make all of his calls, along with Stanzi and use the clock against them. Tenth season on the staff at Missouri. Second year as the defensive coordinator. You know, in the, in the uh, in any level, I was going to say National Football League, but in the NCAA as well. As a center right now, if you can't see, and if you can't identify, you can't play. First penalty against Iowa tonight. There have been only two committed by Missouri in a well-played game. Stands and throws first down. Collins Sandham in the catch in the Mizzou territory at the 40 yard line. 13 yard pickup. This time they showed the same look and then they got out of it. And they only rushed four inside and they were able to get good protection. And because of that protection, there's the zone behind it and Sandham sits down between the defenders and Stanzi finds it. The Missouri team that had 38 sacks coming in, sixth in the nation, best in the Big 12. They have not sacked Stanzi tonight. Quick hitter up the middle for Coker and another first down, ridden down by Xavier Gooden. They caught him right in the middle of a move and a blitz. They moved late, and then you're going to see. Here comes the blitz inside. See, Ebner right there. Oh, and this is this is a tackle that has to be made right there. He's a free hitter, and he was influenced by the motion. 
and Ebner went a little bit to his left because of the motion. Instead, had he stayed inside, he'd had a stick for a loss. Bulls Texas says we're a big gap defense. Guys have to be in their gap. Sometimes they haven't been tonight. Stansy on the rollout, throws to the far sideline, caught. Marvin McNutt inbounds, first down, 16-yard line, perhaps the 15-yard line. He's one of five Iowa players from the state of Missouri. He's from St. Louis, 14-yard game. Watch how he comes back to the football. Really well done by McNutt. He came up and went quickly. Stanzi ahead to the 13. I think they went quickly because they were afraid of a review that might have overturned the catch by McNutt. There's the catch. Does he have oh, a juggle? Yeah, you don't know where the foot was right there, but they ran the play and it's over. Let's look, look take a look for the ooh, ooh. That's a good job by Stanzi getting him back to line of scrimmage. Yeah. It, it looks looked like, like by the time he juggled it and then actually catch. caught it that there, left that left foot might be on the boundary. Cut the tap. They got two with the hurry up play to avoid the replay review. Stanzi, the corner of the end zone, a little too high for McNutt with Carl Geddes in coverage. Oh, Geddes and McNutt have been going after it all night long. Remember, McNutt beat him early in the game or down that right sideline. And then Geddes has been on top of him the whole time. See how he's trying to body position him? He's taking the way to the inside. That time, he was able to turn and find the ball. And when you can face the ball, you make that ball have to go over the top of the defender. Now, McNutt's a bigger man, but Geddes playing him well. There was a penalty against Missouri for hands to the face on that play. For a break for Ricky Stanzi in Iowa. That might have been it there on James. Yeah, they oh, yeah. knocked James Ferentz's yeah, helmet off. You know what you like about Ferentz, he never stopped locking it. He just wrinkled his nose and stuck it right in his chest. Good tough kid, just like his old man. James won the coaches appreciation award. That was picked by the assistant coaches, and they weren't just doing it to play up to their boss. They appreciate the coach's son. Marcus Coker inside the five. Tackle. Yeah, we've Harris. talked about James France and his toughness, and that's one of the first things that you see on the tape. Now, he's a smart guy. He sees the whole field, and like I mentioned earlier, if you can't see, you can't identify, you can't play in there. Not a really big kid, you know, 275 pounds, just a sophomore, but he is tenacious, and he's nonstop, and like I said, He's just like his dad. And off the Coker, he got a hit at the line of scrimmage, bounced ahead for a yard. Tackle. Alden Smith, the outstanding defensive end at the bottom of that pile. First team all Big 12 this year, despite missing three games with a broken leg. Alden Smith has some real speed, and he has some pass rush ability. And they use them in a variety of different ways. They like to use that speed. They use them on blitzes. They'll stand them up at times. They'll move them around. They'll put them down inside as a defensive tackle sometimes to get some speed going on a four-man rush. 12th play of the drive for Iowa. Remember, they started at their own three. Now they're at the Missouri three. Stansy into the end zone, broken up. Deflected away by Andrew Gatchkar, the outstanding linebacker. Gatchkar was able to get back and just get a hand on it. The play action is designed to have Gatchkar get towards the line of scrimmage and attack the line of scrimmage. But he had enough discipline to be able to get back and get his hand in there. Donahue to hold. Meyer to kick. So they force a field goal attempt from a tough angle. Then Schultz, longtime snapper, Donahue the holder, and Meyer. He's one for one tonight from 34 yards. This is a 21 yarder, but from the right hash mark. And nicely done by the true freshman walk on from Dubuque, Iowa. Makes it a two score lead again for the Hawkeyes, trying to win their third straight bowl game for the first time in school history.
Not big enough. Uh, this one, this one, this one. Still not big enough. But it's the biggest one here. Let's be honest. No one ever wished for a smaller holiday gift. It's the Lexus December to Remember sales event. And for a limited time, we're celebrating some of our greatest offers of the year. See your Lexus dealer. New Smirnoff Premium Malt Mixed Drinks. A delicious collision of blueberry and lemon. And a real mixed drink taste worthy of a glass. 5.8% alcohol by volume. Please drink responsibly. Excuse me. Change. It's nice to know you can trust people. State Farm is counting on it. They want you to talk to your neighbors, then call a State Farm agent, find out how you can get discounts up to 40%. See, State Farm insures 40 million drivers. That's more than Geico and Progressive combined. 40 million drivers, more savings, and discounts up to 40%. So call an agent at 1-800-STATE-FARM or go online. Do you have an idea for an invention or a new product? Bill Schaefer, co-inventor of the Splash Wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play. Invent helped submitted his idea to Whammo, makers of toys like the Frisbee and the Hula Hoop. Hi, I'm Clarence McGee, the sales director of Invent Help. To find out how we can help you try to submit your idea to companies, call for your free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain with his invention. Bill's experience is not typical, and most inventions are not successful. For your free inventor's information, call 1-800-349-4512. There are over 400,000 NCAA student-athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. holidays from all of us at ESPN and welcome back to the Insight Bowl record crowd of better than 53,000 here to watch Missouri and Iowa there's the direct TV drive to the national championship bus that's here in Tempe joining us at the Insight Bowl they gave us a ride from the hotel over yes, here tonight and what is that traveling in style we head up to San Diego for the Holiday Bowl on Thursday then the Rose Bowl in Pasadena New Year's Day and back here for the National Championship game, the Tostitos BCS National Title Game in Glendale on January 9th. We're going to have to make a couple modifications in there. They don't have enough food supplies. That's the first <laughs> thing I noticed. Well, Not it was the about a three block trip. I was assuming you'd go that long without eating. <laughs> nice tackle by Brad Herman on the run back by Marcus Murphy. And here's Heather.
bus today. <laughs> it was quite luxurious, Sean, but guys, Missouri is actually without left guard Jason Palmgren. He broke team rules in the hotel while they were here in Tempe. He dressed but hasn't played a snap and is actually suspended, but they kept that a secret. Now, the reason this is big, every offensive lineman has started every game for Missouri all year. Consistency has been critical to their success. So Travis Ruth, the backup center, moved over to guard to start in Palmgren's place. And Matt, how much do you think that late change could be affecting this offensive line? Well, that's a good question, Heather, but I think the bottom line, the way they've been protecting right now, uh, particularly when we looked inside and we saw how Justin Britt had been playing, number 68, I think they've managed it. And again, that goes back to next man up. And I think Britt has, has filled in admirably uh, for Palmgren. And Travis Ruth is rotated in. He's played a lot this year at center and guard. T.J. Moe had the first down catch. Now Agnew makes a diving catch on second down. Michael Agnew, one of the three finalists for the John Mackey Award, is the best tight end of the country, showing his great athletic abilities at the 46 of Iowa. Well, now you saw all the hard throws, and you saw the on the line tough throws we were talking about the pythagorean theorem throws now this is a touch throw that's, that is really well done just over the top as you're looking at tyler sash down number nine just over the top of morris number 44. you can see him right here and morris is going to run with them get your hands on him now get in his hip pocket watch the touch that is really <laughs> this kid's this kid's the real deal sean those NFL guys that we saw before the game who came to watch him are seeing exactly what they came for. Well, we mentioned he's listed as a tight end, but he's really a split out yeah. receiver most of the time. He was, Does he block well enough to be, you know, a typical pro style tight end? Uh, no, no, he's not an on the line guy, but there's a place for him. There's a guy, you know, those are move guys. Those are guys you can spread out. You can motion them. They are guys who present problems in how you match them up. Looked like just a cramp for Sash, the way they were flexing his toes there. Agnew was not all that highly recruited out of Plainview, Texas, but the coaches saw great athleticism. He was a 25-foot long jumper. Gabbard over the middle. James Morris right there on Agnew, but Morris needed help to wrestle Agnew Gabbard down. That's eight more yards for Missouri, and Blaine Gabbard has them on the move. Here in the third quarter, he's thrown for 332 yards. And to piggyback off of what Heather said, this offensive line, they are protecting extremely well. Gabbard. And many more runs by design over the second half of the year, and effectively so. He got the first down to the 29. Well, Kirk Ferentz was talking about his ability to run and not to be surprised when he did it and be, and, and, uh, and be prepared for it because he has that ability. Ten-yard gain on the run by Gabbert. Now all day to throw. But the sun is setting on that day, and he throws it away. Be interesting to see, Matt, now down the stretch, this Iowa defense. Again, playing a hurry-up team, spread team. You think back to the Northwestern game. Yes. When they were clearly out of gas as a defense and coughed up the lead, one of the four fourth-quarter leads they lost. Will they have enough in the tank to go all the way, particularly with a depleted defense? They're very short-handed at linebacker tonight. And Gabbard has exploited that. He throws right down the middle for another first down. Michael Agnew has to down to the 16-yard line. They took Elvis Fisher, the offensive tackle, and, and motioned him all the way outside. And lined him up almost as a, watch, watch Fisher. See him come here he comes. You can tell he doesn't have the usual gait of a receiver. <laughs> lined him up on the line of scrimmage and throw the ball to the tight end just messed up the uh, the Iowa defense. Gabbert throws caught by T.J. Moe. He's a yard short of yeah, another first down. And Norm Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, said you have to get ready for what he called oddball formations when you play Missouri. They'll put both tackles on the same side. It, they they line a lot up of stuff that you don't see, a lot of unbalanced line. Line them up outside, and it creates an unbalanced look to that other side. And so what that does, Defensively, you're like, you know, where do you line up? How do you cover who you're taking? 
Jab of design run, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. For those of you college football fans out there that have not had a chance to watch Blake Gabbard, this isn't a secret. This kid's the real deal. Nicely done by Fisher. Not only can he split outside and give you that wide receiver look, he can also play tackle pretty well. Gary Pinkle and David Yost are saying Gabbert's numbers aren't as prolific this year because they just don't have those big playmakers to give them the gaudy numbers game in and game out from a passing standpoint. That's his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. Grant Russell for the extra point. Back to a three-point lead for Iowa as Missouri goes 77 yards in eight plays. Capital One presents Flashback Images 2005. With only seconds remaining, down by one point, the Hawkeyes' Drew Tate finds Warren Holloway streaking behind the defense for the game-winning touchdown. And he's caught! 10, 5, touchdown! Holloway! Oh, my! For more great images, tune into the Capital One Bowl on January 1st on ESPN. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter. These new meters are more accurate. They're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs, and they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. For more information, call 1-800-264-5300. Now time for the results of the homecoming queen election. The second attendant is Denise Willer. The first attendant is Katie Higgins. And now your homecoming queen is. Okay, here we go. Beauty. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. ESPN College Football, the Insight Bowl, is brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. What's in your wallet? Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. And H&R Block. Never settle for less. And we're back at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. This 22nd Insight Bowl. Had a couple of different homes over the years. They started off playing it down at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Then they played for a while at Chase Field in Phoenix, the Diamondbacks ballpark in Major League Baseball. This is the fifth game here at Sun Devil Stadium, and they've set the attendance record here tonight. This is appealing Big 12, Big 10 matchup, better than 53,000 on hand. Paul Cheney Jr. running back Trey Barrows kickoff. And he's out to the 38 yard line. The kicker Barrow had to make the tackle. Join us New Year's night on ESPN. Matt Heather and I will be right here in this beautiful area for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl as Jordan Todman, one of the best running backs in the country in the Connecticut Huskies, make their first appearance in a BCS Bowl game. They'll be taking on Landry Jones in seventh ranked Oklahoma. The Tostados Fiesta Bowl, 8.30 Eastern, New Year's night on ESPN. UConn. Lost their five, last five, Oklahoma and BCS Bowl games. UConn, UConn in that running game. Jordan Todman's a real deal. That's a guy who will be a high pick. Marcus Coker, an 11-yard gain. And another first down, Andrew Gatchkar, the tackle. Yeah, the big thing there, Sean, is going to be that UConn defense kit. What can they do with that Oklahoma offense? And that that will be the real key. But I think offensively, uh, Jordan Todman, he'll 
he'll get his requisite yards. That'll be fun to watch. Coker getting his yards tonight up to 180 yards rushing. The inside bowl record is 260 by Byron Hans, part of Texas Tech, is the Air Force in 1995. Pump fake and a deep ball by Stanzi. Up for grabs and intercepted by Kevin Rutland. And running room down the far sideline. They're going to mark him out of bounds back at his own 43 yard line. Kevin Rutland, number 20, was in perfect position and then just tracked the ball extremely well. McNutt's trying to get to the top side of him. Now watch. He stays on top, runs to the top shoulder, track the ball. Well, that's really well done. And then has the feet to be able to come down. Now this kid, Rutland, he has NFL abilities. But he's really going to have to work on, well, he has the ball skills, he can run, he can do all those things. He's got to become a better tackler. If he does that, he'll have a complete game. He was a quarterback in high school. He candidly admitted to us the other day it was difficult for him to tackle when he first got to Missouri. He had never done it. That's been a work in progress over his career. Michael Agnew, the catch. He had three catches on their last touchdown drive. So each team has turned it over only once. Gabbard picked off once, and now Stanzi intercepted for just the fifth time this season. Third pick of the year for Kevin Rutland. Sixth of his career, senior out of Houston, Texas. And the Lawrence across midfield, first down Lawrence to the 45 of Iowa. And these are two of the very best teams in the country in turnover margin. Iowa's plus 13, Missouri's plus 11 for the year. Look at Elvis Fisher over here on the left side. And he's, he's blocking an All-American right there in Adrian Claiborne. And that's the first time I've mentioned Claiborne's name. Very yeah. quiet. I was means... stunned he was an All-American this year. Yeah, he stunned. Did. There is Lawrence. Another first down to the 28. I don't know if that was by reputation, but we've had four Iowa games now this year, and I've hardly noticed Claiborne in any of them. And some of it is he gets extra attention, but he got extra attention last year too, when his numbers were way better than they are this year. You know, he has he has some skills that can set him apart. I personally believe he's a left end, not a right end. But that having that having said that, right now. Fisher, that left tackle, he is handling him all night long. Claiborne has one tackle tonight. Gabbert throws, and it's incomplete. Out of bounds, juggled by Rolandis Woodland. By the time he corralled it, he was across the boundary with Sean Prater in coverage. Watch Woodland come back to the football. Does exactly what he's supposed to. He just, oh, he just can't quite hold on to it. Had he been able to control it at the top, he may have come down, but Prater was right on his coverage. He drove it and came back to the ball as well. Is the Iowa defense fatiguing again? Are they going to squander another second half lead? That's been the story of their season. They've been on the field a long time against Gabbert tonight. He's doing his thing. Caught. Egnu very near the marker. They're going to spot him. It appears just short of the first down inside the 20. Now, Sean, to get back to Adrian Claiborne, the Missouri Tiger offense is aware of his skills also because they are keeping a back and they're doubling him the whole time. They're not going to let him get the edge. Fisher has handled him for the most part, but he is getting help from a back most of the time. Number 19 on Mel Kuyper's big board. Third and a yard, and Gabbard keeps it. That's kind of a double-edged sword for Missouri fans tonight. They want Gabbard to play great because they want to see another win and an 11-win season. On the other hand, you don't want him to play so great that these NFL guys are going to coax him into leaving Missouri when this is over. Well, he put his name in. And he put his name in as a junior to be evaluated, and they'll give him a grade coming back. That grade is going to be a high one. I'll be surprised if he doesn't take the uh, take the grade and then run with it. Kevin Moore weaving through this defense. First down. If you're an Iowa fan, you've seen this movie before. A defense that just looks like it is tired in the second half. 12-yard gain for Devin Moore. Watch Moore. Just really, really well done. Just good vision. Knows where he has to go. Gets back up inside. And the defense, as they start to flow, he uses it against him. 
Cuts back inside, finds his way for a first. And now, Brett Greenwood being helped off the field. He's a stalwart of that defense. 47th career start tonight. There are the numbers. Last year they won four games by three points or less. This year one and five in games decided by seven points or less. And all five of them, they were either tied or ahead in the fourth quarter. Pump fake to the end zone. Batted down, flag down. Intended for Agnew. He had Tanner Miller, a true freshman who just came into the ball game for Greenwood in coverage. Ball on the two yard line, automatic first half. And Missouri coaches and Gabbard pretty alert to the fact that Tanner Miller had just come in to the ball game, a freshman who's played very little football this year. Well, and you get thrust into position, and you don't, you, you want to be aggressive, and you have down here, hey, you have to stay on top of the coverage. And now Egnu is, they're going to go to him. This is one area that they're going to love to go to him. And Miller's on top of the coverage, and he gets flagged. Played in only eight of their 13 games this year, Tanner Miller. There's the handoff to Devin Moore, and they're ready for him at the line of scrimmage. Moore carries. By they were down to a minute and a half left in the third quarter. Missouri trying to take the lead for the first time in the game. Here's Heather. Would just return to the field. The athletic training staff tested his neck, asked if there was any numbness or tingling in his hands. They also tested his strength. Once he passed all those tests, he got the green light to go back in. And that's important for this Iowa defense. Second and goal. And a timeout called by Missouri from the sideline. Gary Pinker was all the way <laughs> halfway out on the field. He wanted he wanted that timeout fast. Can you identify the root cause, even if the roots go deep? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you assure IT performance no matter how far down the issues are buried. CA Technologies we can. Can you harness the power of the cloud without creating storms? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you manage and secure the cloud for greater business agility. CA Technologies, we can. I would love to have been a musician, but I knew that I was going to need a day job. We actually have a lot of scientists that play music. The creativity, the innovation, there's definitely a tie there. One thing scientists are working on is carbon capture and storage, which could prevent CO2 from entering the atmosphere. We've just built a new plant to demonstrate how we can safely freeze out the CO2 from natural gas. It looks like snow. It's one way that we're helping provide energy with fewer emissions. H&R Block is doing a second look at our taxes. So someone was in here this morning and left us some flyers. I own a quilt store. I don't like doing taxes. Numbers aren't my kind of thing. I'm really a people person. You're going to carry inventory. You're going to have mileage. There was a lot that I guessed at, and I have a feeling I guessed wrong. Are you ready? I think she's ready. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, it's 5,300. H&R Block. Never settle for less. Hey, Greeny, you know my favorite weekend of the year is back? I know, Golik. Dick's Sporting Goods presents ESPN The Weekend, the ultimate sports fan getaway at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Get up close and personal with some of your favorite athletes and ESPN personalities and check out ESPN Telecast, an interactive sports zone, and so much more. For more details, including special travel packages, visit ESPNTheWeekend.com and book your trip today. Dick's Sporting Goods presents ESPN The Weekend, March 3rd through the 6th. Capital One Bowl Week continues through January 1st. You're watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. And welcome back to ESPN College Football Prime Time, the 2010 Insight Bowl. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox. Iowa leads by three, but in the final minute of the third quarter, Missouri poised to take its first lead of the night. Second and goal from the three. Gabbard, quick throw and a catch and a touchdown for Michael Egno. Missouri's 
spread them all out, Sean. Four receivers to the left, one to the right. There was nobody in the middle of the field. They tried to block it on, from the outside in and bring Agnew back inside. And they were successful with an Iowa player down. Egg knew the touchdown reception is fifth of the year. He's been much more of a target here in the second half. He had one catch in the first half. He's had six here in the third quarter. Again, it's Greenwood being helped off the field for the second time. So Missouri capitalizes on a rare turnover by Iowa. The interception thrown by Stanzi was Iowa's 10th turnover of the season. They started the night tied with Wisconsin for the fewest turnovers in the country. The extra point up and good by Grant Russell, the junior from Jackson, Missouri. And the first lead of the night for Mizzou was a four point edge, 24 to 20. We take a look at tonight's H&R block, never settle play. That's the exit right there. And they're gonna get the ball out to the quick and then they, all the receivers they want to be able to get on all the defenders and then just let Egnu run. Dave Yost, the offensive coordinator, says that he runs violently. And you can see he's a physical runner. Like you mentioned, Sean, he's not a real big guy. And in terms of the blocking, he's a willing blocker, so he will do that. But in, when he runs the football, you saw what happened to Greenwood at the end. He just he got physical with him. He's tall at 6'6", but just 235 pounds. Tremendous athleticism and run and jump. Eighth of nine children from Plainview, Texas. Having a remarkable year. And here's a guy who was a backup for the last couple of years. Came into this season with just seven career catches. Paul Cheney Jr. bringing back Trey Barrow's kickoff. And he spun down at the 28-yard line by Matt White. Matt White. Now it goes back to the offense and that offensive line. See if they can protect Stanzi, get the running game going, because they need to answer. It seems it's it's apparent, obviously, obviously, that this uh, Missouri offense has found a strike. They've been moving the ball well since the middle of the second quarter. Missouri now at the edge and most of the stats. Marcus Coker gang tackled just shy of the 30 yard line. Some extracurriculars after the play. Alden Smith there again. Terrell Rosano also in on the play. Reisner then on Alden Smith, the tight end. Getting after each other a little bit. Reisner's a guy who will block inside of the tight end. He's an online guy. Second and seven Alden Smith has the good speed, but also plays with good leverage. He can be physical when he has to be. Likely to be the final play of the third quarter, unless it's an incomplete pass. It's caught by Cheney, then he lost the ball, and it's rolled incomplete. Whistle dead. It will not count as a touchdown for Gatchkar, as the official on the far sideline says incomplete pass. Kevin Rutland knocked it out of the hands of Paul Cheney. <laughs> At the end of the third period of play, in the 22nd annual inside goal, Missouri 24, Iowa 20. They yeah, never had it. Ooh, I wonder if that, I wonder if it did hit the ground, if it hit, did not hit the ground, Sean. Well, we'll ponder that for a moment, and we'll look at it again after a timeout, <laughs> after we pay your salary for the three million shows that you run on ESPN every week. Back for the fourth quarter after this. The 2011 Discover Orange Bowl, Monday, January 3rd on ESPN.
Your favorite food's fighting you. Fight back fast with Tums. Calcium-rich Tums goes to work in seconds. Nothing works faster. Tum, 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 Tums. We bring her in or we bring her down. I'm innocent! You got me. Now on unrated Blu-ray and DVD. Many will hear the calling. Move it! Yes, sir! Few will earn the title United States Marine. The few, the proud Marines. The Barclays Premier League is on ESPN2. Oh, that's an explosive hit from Navi. Every win is crucial as Man U looks to fend off West Brom. Saturday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2 and ESPN3.com. Coming up on Sports Center from Los Angeles, the Eagles lose at home. They lay an egg. What's that do to the NFC playoff picture? Terrell Pryor apologizes, but will he be a Buckeye next season? And the Lakers lose again. Where's the panic meter at? Where's Tommy? I thought he was with you. No. Jack. Tommy? Go get him. <laughs> Don't stop. Keep playing. from the Foundation for a Better Life. <laughs> Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox. <laughs> oh. Back in the Insight Bowl. Let's go back and take a look at that last play of the third quarter and see if this was a correct call. Yeah, I, it was a good call. And this is, watch Cheney, he bobbles it, and right there, it hits the ground. Then he flips it up in the air, and Gatchkar picks it up from that point. And he never had possession, as you see, juggling, right. juggling. It's still sliding around. Never had it. Hit the ground. Good call by these MAC officials who've been excellent tonight. Yes, they have been. So third down and seven for Iowa, having just relinquished the lead for the first time tonight. Fifteen minutes to go. Can they turn the story of their season and win one in the fourth quarter? Stanzi, plenty of time. Deep throw and intercepted. There is a flag down. Jarrell Harrison picked it off, but there is a flag. There are actually two flags now near the 50-yard line. If it stands, it's the second interception of the year for the senior from Las Vegas. Ricky Stanzi confident it's against Missouri as he's staying out on the field. Alan Reisner was the intended receiver. Gashkar didn't like it. Yeah, he yeah, heard it. Didn't on like the play, it. Holding on the defense. That penalty's declined. Personal foul. 57 on the defense. Unnecessary roughness. That penalty's accepted. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's Brad, Brad Madison called for the very costly personal foul. There was a hold as well. First and well, there's the hold. Yeah, that's uh, 45. A little bit more than a hold, <laughs> and a good call, and right on top of it. And then Madison, on the other end, number 57. Once he sees it, he goes after Stanzi. He was trying to block him, so I don't know about that one. Yeah. Thank Kulagowski, the defensive line coach. There has done a great job. Stanzi. Quick throw, nice catch by Reisner, and a little spin move to get to the 50-yard line. Trying to get away from Kevin Rutland. Kenja Jackson came over to help Rutland. The five-yard gain for the senior from Marion, Iowa. 
Yeah, that Rutland's a good player. Sean, I think the more you watch him and the more you see him, you can see the athleticism. You can see he has a good sense outside. He covers extremely well. And has a good job of staying in there to, for, to, to get it on the tackle. He's become a team captain as a senior. They said he was kind of a reserved guy earlier, but grew into a leadership role. Marcus Coker. First down, 42-yard line. Will Ebner made the tackle, and here's Dari Noka. All right, guys, time for Sports Center right now. Joe Webb got the start, threw for 195 yards, also ran for a touchdown as the Vikings beat the Eagles 24-14 in Philly. NFC Pro Bowl starting quarterback Michael Vick turned it over three times. The loss for the Eagles gives the Bears a first round bye in the NFC playoff. Dwayne Wade racked up a season high 40 points. The Heat beat the Knicks by eight in Miami. Amari Stoudemire 30 in the loss. Full highlights on Sports Center after the game. All right, Jerry, we look forward to Sports Center as always. Good football game here. 13 and a half to go. Iowa down by four, but driving, trying to take back the lead. Coker. Stuff for a yard and a half loss. Alden Smith, Will Ebner in there. By Smith. Good job. That was another stunt. That wasn't a blitz, but it was a stunt. You're going to watch uh, Alden Smith. He's going to come down hard inside, and Webner, or Ebner rather, he comes around the outside. See them all slanting, all slant down inside, and Ebner does a nice job of staying patient, allowing that to clear, and then cleaning up. First carry for Coker tonight that resulted in a loss, and it was his 26th carry of the night. Tenth here in the second half. Second and 12. Coker bounced it to the right, only two there. Andrew Gatchkar made the tackle. Senior from Overland Park, Kansas. Of course, Kansas is their arch rival. There are only three Kansans on the Missouri team, but Gatchkar's dad. Is a lifelong Tiger fan and also a Missouri grad, Tom Gatchkar. So Andrew grew up in Kansas cheering for Mizzou. Well, that coaching staff loves Gatchkar. He's the one guy, the one linebacker who really runs well, always around the football, very good instincts. Big third down and 10. Just a four man rush. It's almost intercepted again, intended for Cheney, and Rutland saw that coming, stepped in front of it, and was almost off to the races. Well, there's Rutland again. He's had himself a very good night for defensive coordinator Dave Steckel. Stanzi right there is lucky, because this one could have been 58 and out the gate right here. You can see in situations like that, they miss Johnson Culianos. They miss Adam Robinson, who's a very good receiver out of the backfield. You'd like to have those guys out there on third down and 10 to give you a better chance. Donahue's punt. Well into the end zone. Nice catch by Micah Hyde, but it doesn't matter. And a timeout. How does vanishing deductible work? That boulder is like your insurance deductible. Big, always hanging over your head. But vanishing deductible from Nationwide Insurance takes $100 off your deductible every year you're a safe driver until... <laughs> Amazing! You saved me. Oh, it was just an analogy, but oh. you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh. Nationwide is, is on, on your side. side. That's very good. Let's be honest. No one ever wished for a smaller holiday gift. It's the Lexus December to Remember sales event, and for a limited time, we're celebrating some of our greatest offers of the year. See your Lexus dealer. Hi, I'm Judy from H&R Block. We are in town to take a relook at your taxes and see if we can get you some more money back. Maybe you'll find something that we've missed. I own a quilt store. Not everyone gets money back, but we will try to find extra money for those that are entitled to it. Are you ready? 1426. Whoa! 2,195. It's, it's 5,300. Hey, is there money? We're just here to get it back. H&R Block. Never settle for less. Hey, babe. I could really go for a snack. Yeah. No. Get in the ball. 
you getting the ball. M&M's. Bring them all home. Really? Couldn't find a bigger ball, huh? Cowhide dries out. So does your manhide. Regular men's body wash can dry out your skin. Dove Men Plus Care is different. Only Dove has micro moisture to fight skin dryness. So that manhide of yours stays clean and moisturized no matter what you put it through. Dove Men Plus Care. Be comfortable in your own skin. Dove Men Plus Care. Also available in a bar. Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow on ESPN with three more games. First at 2.30 Eastern, East Carolina and Maryland in the Military Bowl presented by Northrop Grumman. Ralph Regan's last game as Terps coach at 6 Eastern. The Fighting Illini take on Baylor in the Texas Bowl. First bowl game for Baylor since 1994. And finally at 9.15 Eastern, Arizona and 14th ranked Oklahoma State in the Valero Alamo Bowl. A triple header on ESPN tomorrow. Capital One Bowl Week. How about Ralph Regan, HEC Coach of the Year? Gone. What have you done? Bill Stewart wins nine games. Gone. It's a tough profession. Yes, it is. Missouri scored touchdowns on their last two possessions, and here they come again. And the Lawrence took the short pass from nine yards. Tackled by Adrian Claiborne and that true freshman Tanner Miller back in there for the injured Brett Greenwood. And that's a huge loss for the Iowa defense because Greenwood's played almost every down for the last four years at safety. The second team all Big Ten this year. Wayne Gabbard up to 378 yards passing. Trying to run for the first down. He didn't get it. James Gabbard Morris carries. stopped him. Here's Heather. Guys, Brett Greenwood is back on the field with helmet in hand, but he was back in the locker room getting x-rays on that neck. The injury is on the left side of the base of his neck. They took him back there for precautionary reasons. As I said, he did return, but has not gone back onto the field. But the fact that he has his helmet is a good sign. 11 tackles and an interception in his last game for Iowa. And you know he doesn't want to end it watching from the sideline. Movement on third down and one. Five yard penalty still third down. That could be huge. Third and six at the 20. Big opportunity right here for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Where they had second and one. Gabbert didn't get it on the run. Now third down and six. Travis Ruth. Comes out of the ball game after his flinch. They're six for 11 on third down tonight. Gabbard under duress, threw it away. Pressure for one of the few times tonight from Adrian Claiborne. There's the All American showing up when his team really needed him to do so. Two things, Sean. First, they went man to man on the outside. And then here comes the pressure for Claiborne. Just jumps back inside, is able to beat that guard, Britt, to the inside. Well done. Gets the pressure, forces a throw. And they had, they went man to man, and then they kept the safeties over the top, which is going to force a tighter throw. It took a little bit longer, and Claiborne's able to get there. Grabner, the rugby style punch, short. Caught in traffic, and then Paul Cheney got laid out by Kenja Jackson. Jr. Now we heard that yard putt and literally no return. Yeah, and we heard that all the way up here. And when I say all the way up here, it's way up there. Yeah, no gain on the return. That's a good hit. There are satellites closer to Earth than we are in this press box at Sun Devil Stadium. James <laughs> Jackson, well, that, was a, that was a nice hit. And Missouri couldn't convert on short yardage. That could be huge. You mentioned all the fourth quarter losses for Iowa. Part of it is the offense hasn't done enough to help protect those leads. And they do their part for the Hawks here. As Coker goes to the 46, a five yard gain on first down. And so, Sean, what do they do? You can see. They won four games is that th decided by three or less in 09 this year. They lost five by seven or less. But their recipe is not going to change. And so they're going right back to what they had, how they started. To go back, let the offensive line control, run the ball, control the ball. 
Coker has blockers out in front, has a first down across midfield to the 49 of Missouri. Alden Smith made the tackle. You know, the defense for Iowa has gotten a lot of attention for those squatter leagues, but in some of those games, it's a matter of if you get one more first down on offense, the defense doesn't go back out there. And admittedly, Kirk Ferentz would tell you there's you know there's times where the management of the game wasn't as as, as the best as good as it could have been. He could have done a better job. Now that being said, they're going back to basics, and now it's Coker. 200 yards and counting. Yeah. Just a seventh college game. The future is bright for Marcus Coker. Nothing there again. Coker pads popping. Will Ebner. Jimmy Burge, nose guard in there, number 91, sophomore from Houston. Kenja Jackson also right in on the middle of that thing. That Burge kid, 91, that's a fun kid to watch. Now, he's not a real big guy. He's about yeah, 290 pounds. He's kind of a squatty body, but he plays with very good leverage. Probably wrestled, I would guess, because he has, he has very good hips, stays nice and low, hard to run at. Andy on second and ten in the traffic and intercepted again. Picked off by Jarrell Harrison. By Harrison. And that one's all on Stanzi. Harrison does a nice job of undercutting the receiver, but the ball needed to be thrown out just a little bit further. He has the time. He's able to find him. Just underthrew him. Stanzi has thrown only four interceptions all year. He's thrown two here tonight and nearly a third. You'll recall Harrison had one a moment ago that was nullified by penalties against Missouri. They're reviewing the previous play. They want to make sure he caught it. If Brad Herman had Harrison beat, he had him all the way. The ball was underthrown. He's able to come back underneath and get it. Well, they review it. We'll step aside. Can you identify the root cause, even if the roots go deep? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you assure IT performance no matter how far down the issues are buried. CA Technologies, we can. Can you harness the power of the cloud without creating storms? You can. At CA Technologies, we help you manage and secure the cloud for greater business agility. CA Technologies, we can. Let's be honest. No one ever wished for a smaller holiday gift. It's the Lexus December to Remember sales event. And for a limited time, we're celebrating some of our greatest offers of the year. See your Lexus dealer. It's time for the Bud Light playbook. Today, spelling counts, even in football. We're on the jumble trunk. Look. Oh. Oh. This don't look right, fellas. Oh, guys. Turn up, look. Saw you on the big screen. Uh -huh. There we go. Thank you. Here we go. Never send the Z's for Bud Light. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Proud to stand on our own. Proud to be homegrown. Can you hear that? Right now, when you buy one juicy original chicken sandwich at Burger King, you get a second one for free. It's more than a handful, it's a hands full. Buy one, get one free, only at Burger King. Let's be honest. No one ever wished for a smaller holiday gift. It's the Lexus December to Remember sales event. And for a limited time, we're celebrating some of our greatest offers of the year. See your Lexus dealer. Here's another look at it, and we looked at it several times during the break, Matt. It didn't look like there was anything to overturn the call. It was ruled a catch, an interception on the field by Jarrell Harrison, and nothing that could overturn it after the review. 
Terrell Harrison did a good job of getting his hand underneath the ball and controlling it. And that's exactly what they replayed and looked at. Stanzi just, he had Herman. Herman had, had Harrison beat. He underthrew the ball. Two Second interceptions point. tonight, and he's gotten away with a couple of other throws that could have been picked off. So here's Gabbard. They're going to come out flinging it up by four. T.J. Moe spun around but not tackled and finally taken down, but it looks like a first down just across the 41 for Missouri. Tanner Miller made the tackle. Another crossing route, which, of course, requires time. And there's plenty of time. He's able to find Moe. And if I could just find a, a Curly and a Larry out there, we'd be in great shape. <laughs> hey, Mo. well, Moe's had a terrific year. He's another guy who thought he was going to be a backup when the year started. Wound up with 77 catches in the regular season. Here he comes again. Another first down across midfield. Chased down from behind by Sean Prater. Now, this is the part of the game that people don't see all the time because Here's T.J. Moe, and this is man-to-man. -man. This is man-to-man -man against a good cover corner in Prater. They're keeping the safeties over the top, but they've decided to match things up, and Moe's winning inside. Here he is again. 12 catches for T.J. Moe. In the 89 for the year. Wes Kemp, short catch, hit immediately. Jordan Bernstein made the catch. He's played very little this year. That's how depleted they are due to injuries on defense. He did not play very well, but Sean, he read that like he plays all the time. He sees it, nice break on the ball and a good hit. Kemp got out slow. In fact, he's coming off the field now. Gabbert's over 400 yards passing now, 402. The inside ball record is 476 by Drew Bledsoe, Washington State against Utah back in 92. And he'll add to that total with the completion of Jarrell Jackson. He's over 100 yards receiving tonight, 126 on eight catches. Sean Prater made the stop. Here's a big third down and two, perhaps in four down territory if necessary for Mizzou. Six and a half to go. Missouri, the ball on a four-point lead. Gabbard, the threat to run in these situations. Throws short for Mo. He has it. Pushed out by Hunter, a first down. I was shocked. I thought for sure, with all the man under, too deep they were going to, they went to his own chunk. And this one, this one surprised me. He locked it up on the outside, but he has Hunter on the inside against Mo, and Mo's been eating that up all night long. The average five for five on this drive. 38 completions is already an inside bowl record. The previous mark was 36 by Graham Harrell of Texas Tech against Minnesota in 06. Perhaps on his way to a career high is 418. His career high is 468. Running all over, throws it away! Threw it right to Micah Hyde! Hyde's taken one back for a touchdown this year. Iowa's returned three interceptions for touchdowns this year. This might be another! Micah Hyde! All the way! Touchdown, Iowa! by Micah Hyde. Awful decision by Gabbard. Should have thrown it away. Tried to make a play, and Hyde made him play. Hey, rather. Sorry. Micah Hyde's fourth interception of the year. This when it looked like Iowa was clinging to life in this game. They have the lead. The extra point is good. Doinked in off the right upright by Mike Meyer. And the lead is three. Their fourth interception return for a touchdown this year. You'll recall that earlier in this year, again against Michigan State, Sash picked one off, lateraled it to Hyde, who went 66 yards. One of the plays of the year in the Big Ten. Here's one of the big plays in recent memory for Iowa. They're up with five and a half to go.
the 2011 All-State Sugar Bowl, Tuesday, January 4th on ESPN. I really should be in the market, but the volatility? Exactly. I'm this close to retirement. That's the money I need to live on. You know, Prudential has this video you should see. My advisor recommended it. Where do I see it? Retirementredzone.com. I learned some things there that really helped. Like? Like how to invest now when it's your retirement income at stake. Huh. I'll check it out. Need a smarter approach to investing for retirement? Watch our video at retirementredzone.com. Then talk to your financial professional. Right on the money. 522 bucks. That's what people save on average when they call me to switch to insurance. Well, if they switch to insurance online, they could save 522 clams. I could save them 522 smackers. You talking dough? Bread. Benjamins? Scratch, greenbacks, moolah, cheddar. Simoleons. Don't try to outsave me. He's the saver. I know he's the saver. You could save 522 bucks. See for yourself at insurance. Technology when you want it, people when you don't. When I close my eyes, I see the way this world shall be. When we go hand in hand. When the last child cries for a crust of bread. When the last man dies for just words that he said. And college football, the Insight Bowl, is brought to you by Insight, a proven provider of game-changing technology solutions for your business. The Lexus December to Remember sales event, now for a limited time at your Lexus dealer. And Discover, it pays to discover, official card of the Bowl Championship Series. What a play by the Iowa defense, a unit that's taken a lot of criticism and much of it deserved for squandering so many leads in the fourth quarter this year. But the defense just got the lead back for Iowa. Lane Gabbard's 38 out of 51, but he's thrown two crucial interceptions tonight. One in the end zone going in at the end of the first half when it looked like they were going to tie up the game. And now this one when it looked like they were just about to take control of the game. Mike Meyer kicks off. Marcus Murphy from the three. And it did not reach the 20. Officially a 72 yard interception return by Micah Hyde, longest in a bowl game ever by an Iowa player. Well, you can see right here, he decides, Kemp, number eight, decides that he is going to turn into a blocker. And Gabbert never sees it. And so he tries to touch it over the top of Hyde. The touch is not there. And then Hyde, right here, Bernstein, number four, just gets enough a piece of him that allows him to get the edge. And then he was gone. But can the Iowa defense protect a fourth quarter lead again? Four times they failed to do so. And in their other loss this season, they couldn't protect the fourth quarter tie at Arizona. Tanner Miller made the tackle on T.J. Moe. Hey, that Moe's an impressive kid. Not a fast kid, but boy, he knows how to get open. 14th catch by T.J. Moe. That ties the ball record most receptions. Desmond Briscoe at 14 for Kansas against Minnesota in 08. Devin Moore has the first down out to the 32 yard line under five minutes to go. How inexplicably they've slowed their pace attack. Kind of interesting. I think they might try to speed it up too with the history that Iowa has of fatigue on defense in the fourth quarter. And they generate a rush with four. They did for a moment, but then Klug slipped down, and Gabbert throws it away. James Morris running in coverage with Michael Agnew. Yeah. 
This is what we were talking about earlier, and Sean, you had talked about. And, and here's the bottom line. The bottom line is when you're supposed to be a premier defense, you shut games out. And you take them over at critical times. This is the critical time. And through the season, they've not been able to get it done. You and I have both seen them gas at times. Against Ohio State, they have the lead in the fourth quarter. Terrell Pryor on fourth and ten from midfield. Ran for a first down. Ohio State went on to win. Boy, bodies tangled there. And there is a flag as Prater and Moe got tangled up. Prater was arguing with the back judge that wasn't his fault. Holding on the defense, number 28. Ten yard penalty, automatic first down. But Bob Stinson did not agree. First down, Missouri. Mo versus Prater. Prater's trying to build a wall. That's a good call. Yeah. Pro game a little, Mo game a little <laughs> shove at first, but then you know, Prater just grabbed the arm and pulled him right down. Yeah. That's been a nice battle all night long. To be the 80th play run by Missouri. That's a lot. I was at 53 snaps on offense. Gabbard looked left, threw over the middle to Jarrell Jackson, and a good tackle by Gabbard Tanner Miller. Ooh, that was true Jackson. freshman has played almost not at all. Oh, that's a good call by you because if Miller doesn't make that tackle, they're manned up right now. There's nobody in the middle of the field. Jackson hopped off. Tanner Miller's a freshman from Kelowna, Iowa. They're playing without Brett Greenwood, their four year starter at safety. Elvis Fisher, the tackle again, went in motion to the right. The throws to the left to T.J. Moe, his bowl record 15th catch. Very near a first down across midfield, shoved out by Sean Prater. Boy, it's been tight coverage. The windows have been small, and by that I mean the area that you're allowed to throw in have been small because Prater's been on the coverage. They come up to the line third and one. They didn't convert earlier. That false start penalty was costly. But Gabbard got it there. Well, T.J. Moe had never been a receiver until he came to college. He was a quarterback in high school, running back. But they thought he might be a defensive back when they recruited him. And he said, I didn't care. I just wanted to be a Missouri Tiger. Wherever they wanted me to play, that's what I was going to do. And boy, has he become a prolific receiver. Well, he came into the game with 77 receptions. He's going out with another, what, 15 more? Yes, and they're not finished. Lawrence got walloped by Christian Ballard. Looked like he might have slipped, did Lawrence, which made the hit look even that much sturdier. Short gain on the play, about a yard. See Christian Ballard, number 46 on the top, and they are, this is. Out. Yeah. You can see they're, Sean, they're gassing again. This is a tired defensive line. This is the strength of this defense. But they look tired right now. Under three minutes to go. All three timeouts remaining for both teams. Missouri the ball down by three. Gabbert takes off running. Couple of yards pursued out by Broderick Bins. Junior from St. Paul, Minnesota. He's a backup, so they are trying to get some fresh legs in there. And Bins does play a lot. Nice decision by Gabbert to pull it down and take off and run. It appears that if he doesn't have Mo, he's not going to too many other people. The old line coach over there, Kirk Ferris, thinks that the Missouri line is holding. They've thrown it 55 times, I believe, without an offensive holding call. Two and a half to go. Third and six, a rear Iowa blitz, and they got to him. Looked like James Morris again off the corner, the true freshman linebacker. They don't blitz often, but they've had a couple of well-timed blitzes tonight. Oh, Norm Parker, you're going to see him right here. Norm Parker, he dials it up. He shows that it's man-to-man. -man. Gabbert doesn't see it. The tackle doesn't slide out. The guard's trying to come from inside out, can't get there. And Morris puts the pressure on, sets up this big fourth down. And they're going to go for it. Thought they might punt with 2.20 left in all three of their timeouts. All they would need is a field goal when they get it back to force overtime. Fourth and six. Gabbard throws low. Is it caught? Yes. Rule the catch by T.J. Moe. 
what a night he's having. First down, Mizzou at the 33-yard line. <laughs> a great throw, great catch. Low goes down to 16th. That is just, arms are underneath. They're going to look at it. Yes, they are. To see if he didn't have control before he went out of bounds. Yeah, it was tough to tell on that first replay from this angle again, whether that ball wobbles around a little bit. I mean, he looks like he's still trying to fully possess it there as he's across the boundary. Tough to tell. I'm glad I'm not, you know, it's funny. At halftime, I ran into the replay official and the communicator, Tom Workman and John Course. Said, hey, kind of an easy night for you. And they said, yeah, you wait. Something's going to happen at the end of the game. <laughs> and here it is. They are faced with a crucial call. Hands are under. That might decide the game in the final analysis. Now, what I'm wondering is, does he have it in his possession, or is he still kind of corralling it again there when he's out of bounds? No, Sean. This looks like he didn't have control all the way through the catch. It looks like it may have hit the ground. He has his hands underneath. That one you can't really see. Does it go any further than that? Apparently well, it doesn't. When he I'd bounced. Like if, they, it, if they kept. I don't know if our guys in the truck. Yeah, if we can take it any further than that. Because the question is, does he kind of regather it in? Exactly. As he goes across the boundary. Boy, it's a tough call. Now the ruling on the field was a catch. So it has to be conclusive to overturn it. This is probably the best look. There's the hands underneath. There's a catch. Now, watch he come back up. Does he have it all the way through? Yeah. Right there, it looks like it, it It may have hit the ground. But I don't, is that enough to overturn it, Sean? I don't know. It, you know, if you didn't need that standard, I would say he didn't catch it. But because the call was he caught it, and it doesn't look to me like there's enough to overturn that, I think you'd have to let it stand. I don't think he caught it, but I don't think there's enough to overturn it, would be how I would summarize my feeling on this. It's taking a very long time. Gary Pinkle clapping. But you can understand why it's taking a long time. This might be the thing that determines the game. Exactly. <laughs> I do think back to that conversation. You wait, something will happen. <laughs> we'll have a tough call at the end of the game. Well, they got exactly what they thought they might get in that replay booth. Regardless of the outcome, what a night TJ Moe has had. And they've put their best cover corner on him. If it's taken this long, how could it be conclusive proof to overturn it? Would That's now be point. my question. After further review, it's an incomplete pass. First and ten. Well, I give them credit. I think they made the right call, Matt. I, I just right. didn't think they'd make it because you could hide behind the well and wasn't conclusive, which gives the replay people an out. So give them credit in the booth for making a courageous call. I think it's right. He was still kind of trying to gather it back in, even as he went across the boundary. And that ball scraping along the ground there. They got it right. I think they did. Just goes right for another snatch of it right here yeah. again. He's still trying to corral right. and he's out of bounds. Okay, so there's still three timeouts. They have to stop yep. him here to get this ball back. The ball comes back out to the original line of scrimmage, the 43. Coker having an MVP performance. Very near a first down. They're going to mark it right at the 47. No signal yet from Tom McCabe if it is a first down. Xavier Gooden made the tackle. Now they give it to him. Well blocked. Nicely done by Morse. Tackle. It is a first down. Gary Pinkle elected not to use a timeout here, so the clock's gone under two minutes left. Two hundred and twelve yards most ever in a bowl game rushing Marcus Coker the true freshman without Adam Robinson tonight their leading rusher one yard gain Jack Quee Smith made the tackle they'll use their first time out with 134 to go. 
Oh, they didn't use the timeout. Ooh, that surprised me there. What are they doing? I the clock's going to go under a minute. Yeah, they're fighting their clock. They're not fighting. Forget the timeouts. They want to get the ball back, but they need time on their side. I don't get this one. Marcus Cook, you can see in the second half, 100 yards, averaging over six yards a carry. At the start of the game, we said it's next man up. The recipe wouldn't change, and it didn't. Coker barrels down to the 40-yard line. Chopped down by Jarrell Harrison. And now the timeout with 53 seconds left. And a big third down upcoming for Kirk Ferentz in Iowa after this. Let's be honest. No one ever wished for a smaller holiday gift. It's the Lexus December to Remember sales event, and for a limited time, we're celebrating some of our greatest offers of the year. See your Lexus dealer. for a pair of jeans? Give me a break. I wear Lee Premium Select because they fit, they're comfortable, and they cost less than 50 bucks. And according to studies, I've been told they make my butt look good. Researcher. Getting comfortable never looks so good. Do you have an idea for an invention or a new product? Bill Schaefer, co-inventor of the Splash Wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play. Invent helped submitted his idea to Whammo, makers of toys like the Frisbee and the Hula Hoop. Hi, I'm Clarence McGee, the sales director of Invent Help. To find out how we can help you try to submit your idea to companies, call for your free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain with his invention. Bill's experience is not typical, and most inventions are not successful. For your free inventor's information, call 1-800-349-4512. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to work. I hate mornings. Great, I have 20 minutes. No time for coffee. Hello, my friend. Can't get it together in the morning? Try 5-Hour Energy. It's simple, effective, and unlike coffee, it's ready right now. No waiting, no hassle. Let's do this. 5-Hour Energy, the no-wait, no-hassle way to a great morning. Well, our apologies to Gary Pinkle. Our bug on the bottom of the screen there was incorrect. He did not have all three timeouts left. He had only two. You'll recall he ran onto the field to call a timeout late in the third quarter, so... That's why he was waiting, because he didn't have three timeouts. He only had two, so now he has one with 53 seconds to go. And a must stop here for his defense on third down and three. See what defensive coordinator Dave Steckel does here. If he stacks the box. This here they go. Be the ball game if Iowa could convert. Stansy rolls out and throws to Reisner. How about that call? He may go. Alan Reisner down to the one yard line. Never accused Ken O'Keefe of being conservative again. That was a great call. Great call. The Tigers, they load the box just like we expected. And then they jump down inside hard. And here comes Stanzi. What a great call, Sean. By Ken O'Keefe, who's taken an inordinate amount of criticism. In years when Iowa struggles, Ken O'Keefe takes a lot of abuse. When they have a great season like last year, he doesn't. He's an excellent football coach. Doesn't deserve the heat he's taken. And good for him. That's a great call. Talk about that on your talk shows and in your newspapers tomorrow. Stands, he takes a knee. And the Iowa Hawkeyes have flipped the script in their last game of the season, last game of his career for Stanzi. After so many fourth quarter collapses, that was the story of their regular season. The defense wins the game with an interception return for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Kirk Ferentz and the Hawkeyes end their three-game losing streak and finish at 8-5. And, 
and Missouri denied trying to win four straight games during the season for the first time since 1965. Marcus Coker is the Capital One player of the game. An Iowa Bowl record, 219 yards rushing and two touchdowns, breaking the mark held by Bob Cheater in the 1959.